Program studi proteksi tanaman juga didukung Laboratorium Center for Development of Advanced Science and Technology atau SIDES yang merupakan laboratorium terpusat. Laboratorium ini berada di gedung SIDES dan telah digunakan oleh dosen proteksi tanaman dalam melaksanakan penelitiannya mulai tahun 2010 dan akan mulai digunakan mahasiswa program studi proteksi tanaman pada akhir tahun 2020 dalam melaksanakan riset skripsinya. Selain itu, program studi proteksi tanaman juga akan didukung oleh Gedung Laboratorium Plan and Natural Medicine. Laboratorium sharing dengan Fakultas Farmasi ini sedang dalam proses pembangunan dan memasuki minggu ke-75. Gedung laboratorium yang konstruksinya dikomandoi oleh Hutama Karya dan Nindia Karya ini rencananya akan diserah terimakan paling cepat pada awal 2021. Di lokasi terpisah, dengan jarak kurang lebih 15 km dari kampus utama Universitas Jember, di daerah Jubung, Kabupaten Jember, juga terdapat fasilitas yang mendukung kegiatan Tridharma Sivitas Akademika Program Studi Proteksi Tanaman. Beberapa fasilitas tersebut antara lain Biofertilizer Factory, Lahan Uji Terbatas, dan Center Hub. Sama dengan Lab Plan and Natural Medicine, fasilitas ini juga dalam proses pembangunan oleh Tama Karya dan Nindia Karya Kontraktor dan telah memasuki minggu ke-75 konstruksi. Di bidang pendidikan, hospitality mahasiswa, olahraga, dan kesehatan, program studi proteksi tanaman didukung oleh auditorium, perpustakaan Universitas Jember, asrama mahasiswa, beberapa gelanggang olahraga, serta unit medical center atau UMC. Salah satu gedung baru yang pendanaannya didukung ISDB Project adalah auditorium yang merupakan gedung serbaguna Universitas Jember yang saat ini masih dalam proses finishing. Di samping auditorium juga terdapat tempat ibadah berupa masjid yang saat ini sedang dilakukan renovasi skala besar untuk meningkatkan daya tampung. Perpustakaan Universitas Jember secara terbuka dapat dimanfaatkan oleh Sivitas Akademika Program Studi Proteksi Tanaman dengan dukungan lebih dari 7.000 buku di bidang perlindungan tanaman, ekologi, pertanian, dan sains dasar umum. Terbuka mulai pukul 8 hingga pukul 20.00 waktu Indonesia Barat. Selain itu, Perpustakaan Universitas Jember juga melanggan Springer Lecture and EBS Co. yang dapat diakses oleh Sivitas Akademika Program Studi Proteksi Tanaman dan Universitas Jember secara gratis. Di bidang kesehatan Sivitas Akademika, Program Studi Proteksi Tanaman mendapat dukungan penuh dari Unit Medical Center atau UMC. Unit kesehatan ini menempati luas lahan seluas 1.500 meter persegi dengan gedung seluas 525 meter persegi. Unit ini melayani beberapa poli seperti poli umum, poli gigi, dan poli kesehatan ibu dan anak, serta UGD yang dilengkapi dengan beberapa ambulans.
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Our opening ceremony is going to start in a few minutes. For your information, this event currently live on UNED's official YouTube channel. Everyone can watch this webinar wherever they are, so you can inform your friend to enjoy this event online. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished guys, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning and welcome to the event international webinar series with the topic Virus, the best friend, the development of virus-based biological control agents. It's great honor for me, Ankar Yansa Pandu Pradana, to be here as the master of ceremony for this event. Before we proceed the program today, we would like to express our sincere gratitude to the Excellency Rector of University of Jember, Dr. Insinyur Iwan Taruna, Master of Engineering, the Honorable Vice Dean of Academic of Agriculture Faculty, University of Jember, Dr. Insinyur Evita Soliha Hani, MP, the Honorable Executive Director of Project Implementation Unit of Islamic Development Bank, University of Jember, Mr. Hannes Dodimolasi, SOSMA, the Honorable Speakers, Dr. Insinyur Yayi Munara Kusumah, MSE, from the IPB University, Insinyur Supiani, MO, MAGR, PhD, from the 11 Maret University, Mr. Hadian Susoki, SAMP, PhD, from the University of Jember, Associate Professor Dr. Lai Wei Hong from the University Putra Malaysia, and also all of the participants. Before we begin, I would like to introduce the agenda of this program. The first agenda is opening, and then following by singing Indonesia National Anthem and hymn University of Jember, Welcoming remark by Dean, Vice Dean of Academic of Agriculture Faculty, University of Jember. Welcoming remark and official opening by Rector, University of Jember. Prayer, virtual photo session, and session, and the last agenda is closing. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to show me the statistics of the participant of this webinar. Total of registered participants is 230 participants, and all of the
ladies and gentlemen. The next agenda will be the welcoming remark by Vice Dean of Academic of Agriculture Faculty, University of Jember. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Insinyur Evita Soliha Hamni MP. Thank you, um, Mr. Uh, Ankaran Yatsa, for my uh, for my time. Honorable uh, Executive Director of Program Education Unit of Islam Islamic Development Bank, University of Jember. Uh, Honorable Director of Study Program of Plants Protection. Honorable Dr. Insinyur Yayi Munara Kusuma, MSc from FTB University. Uh, Honorable Institute Piani, MP, MSD, PhD, uh, Lecturer Civil Smart University. Honorable Assist Professor Dr. Lakwe Hong, Lecturer from University of Ultra Malaysia. And Honorable Yan Social Adi, SPMP, PhD, Lecturer from Fan Protection University of Timber. Honorable Lecturer of Plan Protection of Faculty of Agriculture, University of Timber, and uh, participants. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Greetings, hearty for of us. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the international webinar series with us in this morning. Uh, that is a greeting from the Dean. He obliges for not being able to join us this morning because uh, uh, there are other activities. So in this case, uh, I represent uh, my Dean. Uh, I'm Evita Sorhandi. Uh, I'm a Fires Dean one in academic Fires. Uh, this webinar is an implementation of MOU between Islamic De Development Bank and the University of Chamber, where the implementation of this morning is carried off by the PA, uh, program study of plant protection of faculty agriculture. Thank you from coordinator uh, plant protection. Uh, you have uh, had this uh, activity in this morning, holding, holding uh, activities this morning. I hope uh, the discussion about this uh, virus not only here can be continued with other uh, activities. Uh, hopefully, uh, today's uh, seminar will be useful. By reading Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, international webinar series with the momentum is virus the uh, former best friends, the development of virus based biological control agent is open it. Thank you. Thank Good. you very much, Dr. Engineer Evita Solihani MP, for the welcoming speech. And the next following agenda is. Uh, welcoming remark and official opening by Rector University of Jember. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Insinyur Iwan Taruna, Master of Engineering. Thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi uh, Very good morning, everybody, honorable participants and distinguished speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, and all my dear friends who join this uh, event. Uh, first of all, greeting uh, should be expressed this morning to the God of Allah for his most merciful and kindness so that we can be in this virtual room uh, to participate in international webinar with them of virus, uh, the farmer best friend, they call it like that, <laughs> development of virus based biological control agent. Uh, as usual, in the beginning, allow me to remind you that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is not over yet worldwide. And therefore, please uh, keep in conforming with the COVID-19 health protocol. 
keep wearing a mask, washing hand regularly, having physical uh, distancing and leveling up our immunity. May God, uh, may the God always bless us with a health and a goodness. Amin, Ya Rupal Alamin. On behalf of the Unity Member this morning, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to this forum, which is being hosted by the Faculty of Agriculture, University of Jember, and in collaboration with the PIU, ICDB Project, uh, University, of, University of Jember. Uh, accordingly, uh, I would like to deliver also, also uh, my great appreciation and thanks for the achieve, uh, for this achievement to the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, the University of Jember, and the Executive Director, uh, PIU, Mr. Honest Dodi, and of course to the best team of organizing committee who I cannot mention uh, one by one in this uh, event. We are pleased this morning to have speakers who come from several reputable Asian universities, such as IPB University, uh, University of Sebelas Maret, UPM Malaysia, of course, this is uh, come from a uh, foreign country, and including our home university. Uh, I see Dr. Hadrian will be, will be a speaker in this event also. Welcome to the present webinar, Bapak Dr. Yayi, Bapak Supiani PhD, and Associate Professor Lau Wei Hong. Uh, it is nice to meet you, uh, although in virtual room. We hope to see you uh, next time, but not in virtual room when pandemic is over. <laughs> we wish you to enjoy this activity today. Uh, participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this webinar uh, is planned to discuss about application of fires uh, as a value control agent in agriculture. I expect this will broaden our view related to such topics as well as to encourage. Uh, maybe student or lecturer who join uh, this event today to do fast updating to the recent development on the fire situation in improving the agricultural productivity. As we know, Indonesia is located in the tropical area which is where uh, the agriculture is one of the important driving factor of economic growth in Indonesia. We need for sure to keep the sustainability of this sector uh, development for our future. Uh, therefore, we are this, this event will not uh, stop here, but follow up by the expansion of opportunity in academic collaboration with uh, any uh, institution in order to strengthen scientific collaboration, network, and uh, joint research. Because the qualified, uh, the, the qualified output activities or performance, uh, such as uh, we, 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 did, uh, we do today, uh, like international partnership, is aimed to improve actually our competencies in the field of study as well as increase uh, quality of graduate curricula and lecture. So that it will match with the need a uh, variety of our output users. Okay, that's all uh, my welcome remark. Uh, just let's start this webinar. We believe, uh, we believe uh, this become an interesting forum for discussing uh, the aforementioned topic. I believe moderator in charge, Ali Bafa, will manage this forum finally. Okay, just prepare yourself to be challenged, excited, ready to do this activity. So again, thank you for all uh, you being here. Uh, please enjoy and have pleasant experience uh, this webinar. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Iwan Taruna, Magister of Engineering, for the welcoming remark and officially open the webinar today. Ladies and gentlemen, the next agenda will say our blessings that led by Mr. Bahroini Habiantono, MP. Kindly, please, Mr. Bahroini Habiantono, MP, time is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, let us bow our head for a moment. Pray to God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that our international webinar can be precious to all of us. I will lead this prayer based on the teaching of, of Islam. And those who are not Muslims, you are pleased to pray according to each of your beliefs. A'udhu billahi minas shaitani rojim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin, 
hamdan yuafini amahu wa yukafi mazidah. Ya Rabbana lakal hamdu kama yang bagi li jalali wajahika wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Rabbana zolamna angfusana wa ilam takfir lana wa tarhamna lalakunana minal khasirin. Rabbana wala tahmil alayna isron kamal hamal tahu ala lazina min qobelina. Rabbana wala tuhammilna ma'ala taqatala nabi. Wa fu'anna wa firlana warhamna anta maulana fangsurna alal qawmil kafirin. Rabbana firlana wali walidayna wali jami'il muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat inna ka'ala kulli syai'in qadir. Oh Allah, today in this beautiful place, we gather here to bring about an international webinar series. The term is virus, the farmer best friends, the development of virus biological control agent. Make this international webinar as a useful science assemble, as a medium of sharing useful ideas, knowledge, and experience of scholars, researchers, and studies of various disciplines. May the webinar we organize today benefits to our life, broaden our knowledge, shine our ideas, and lead us to be successful, productive persons, which in turn will boost dignity of our nation. O oh Allah, guide and bless our hearts and our minds with the light of your guidance. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities. Help us to speak our minds clear, clearly. Help us to listen to each other, respect each other, love each other, so that we are included to the blessed person. Oh Allah, protect us from unintended temptation, show us the right path, and give us knowledge and strength to for perform good things equally. Show, show us and make it clear the bad thing and give us knowledge and strength to avoid them. Oh Allah, you are the one who can fulfill our doa. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa kinna azabannar. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Amin. Thank you, Mr. Bahroni Habriantano MP. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start the main session, we will have photo session. Please prepare your camera. Now, you may turn on the video, please. Okay, now time to capture the photo. One, two, Three. Okay, next slide. One, two, three. Next slide. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to read the rule of the webinar today. Uh, I will share the... The rule of the webinar today, uh, participants are required to use the full name as the Zoom ID. Please don't use the device name or your institutional names. And then microphone can be used only with the approval of the host or co-host. Uh, the attendance from link will be sent to the chat room 30 minutes before the webinar ends. Participants are prohibited from distributing the attendance from link to others who don't attend the webinar. And air certificate will only be given to participants who fill out the attendance form. And for the discussion rules, please click the raise hand feature and questions are presented briefly and clearly. Questions can be submitted via 
via chat to the host by writing your name, your institution, and name of the speaker being asked, and write your question briefly and clearly. And then the moderator will arrange the discussion session. Thank you. Without any further ado, now we are entering to the main session. In this session, we'll be led by our moderator, Mr. Ali Wafa, SP MSI. To the committee, please share uh, Mr. Ali Wafa CV. Okay, first of all, allow me to introduce our moderator today, Mr. Ali Wafa, SPMSE. He passed his bachelor at University of Jember and master degree at IPD University. His expertise is about plant microbiology, especially in mycology. For the professional experience, Currently, he is a lecturer at the Department of Plant Protection, University of Jember. And currently, is a secretary of Indonesian Hitopa. So now, please welcome Mr. Ali Wafa, SP, MSE. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pandu. Yes. Uh, introducing me so well and good morning and also good afternoon for Korean participant and also good late night for African participant I hope you can join in our international webinar by not mistaken and then honorable rector University of Jember Bapak Dr. Luang Daruna Magister Engineering Honorable Bapak Hamas Budimulasi Estos, Magister of Art, Director of Executive Project Implementation Unit, Islamic Development Bank, University of Jember, Vice Dean of Academic Affairs, Ibu Dr. Ingenieur Evita Solihani, and Honorable my Head of Program Study, Mr. Saibuddin Hashim. Good morning. And Honorable All Speaker of Webinar today, Bapak Aldian Susilo Hadi, PhD, Bapak Dr. Yayi Munara, Bapak Sipiani, PhD, and Associate Professor Dr. Lau. All of participants, welcome to webinar, International Webinar Series with the virus, the farmer best friends, development of virus based biological control agents. This uh, them we get because we know today virus is called uh, the most bad things today because the pandemic COVID-19. So with uh, this webinar, international webinar, we will know and study about the good virus, especially for agriculture. And if I'm not mistaken, today international webinar become the last international 2020 webinar series. We're supporting by ICDB project University of Jember. So thanks for ICDB project was supporting this webinar. And also thanks for Rector of University of Jember and Faculty of Agriculture. Today webinar, we have four distinguished speakers, and I asked committee inform to me last night. We have two TNA sessions. So after two speaker speech about his or her material, we will open the session Q and A session. Uh, so during the speaker presentation, you can write the, your question in the Zoom chat. However, the direct question by Raisen will be open in the Q&A session only. 
Now, without wasting our time, I will call our first speaker, Mr. Adib HD. And before I have him half hour for his presentation time, let I read Mr. Adib HD CV. Mr. Hardian Susilo Adi SP MP PhD has his educated master education in Gajah Mada University Indonesia and to his PhD in Hiroshima University Hiroshima University Higashi Hiroshima Japan. His expertise about molecular biotechnology, especially about the bacteriophage. So he will bring context about the bacteriophage utilization. He also write many, many publication. So you can search his uh, Google Scholar ID. So one of the latest uh, publication is about the involvement of Pilkew spirits of type for Pili in page infection in Rastonia Rastonia has published on bio biochemical and biophysical research communication, the quartile one of uh, Scopus Index. So, Mr. Hardian or Mr. Adi, I call. Thirty minutes for your presentation. Time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, uh, for, for uh, introducing uh, me to, to this event. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my Excellency, uh, uh, Director of the University of Jember and then representative of the Faculty of Agriculture. Uh, <clears throat> as mentioned before, I would like to present about the factor of its utilization. So, uh, let me share my slide. Okay. Uh, in this uh, event, in this moment, I'd like to present uh, about and share my some of or uh, some part of my my work uh, in the bacteriophage uh, area. Uh, with the title of the bacteriophage utilizations and phase based biological control development in agriculture. So this will be uh, honorable for me because I will be, uh, I, uh, I am uh, as the, the first speaker in this event. So uh, let me start uh, about the outline of uh, the presentation today uh, within 30 minutes. I hope I can finish it all in 30 minutes, but uh, uh, also I hope uh, all audience, all participants here can understand and then can get the point of uh, what I presented today. Okay, the, the first I would like to uh, talk about the introduction of the bacteriophage and the second, uh, the potency of bacteriophage as biological control in agriculture. And then the third, the obtaining and utilization and utilizing bacteriophage as a biological control, of course, in the agriculture uh, area. And then the last one, uh, I will talk uh, about the bacteriophage formulations. But uh, I already make a, it uh, become more uh, compressed. So I hope everyone here understand about the, the, the topic that I talk about. Okay, in the bacteriophage, actually, uh, composed of two words uh, from the Latin, Latin and Greek. So uh, bacteriophage actually is the uh, bacteria and phaging. So if we co combine this bacteriophage name, it become a, a virus that infect and replicate within bacteria and archaea. So this uh, actually a virus that infect uh, bacteria, so only bacteria. So this, uh, the virus cannot infect other organisms like uh, humans, uh, animals, and fungi. This virus specifically infect the bacteria. 
So in in uh, some simple word, uh, some simple word, uh, people or scientists they uh, sometimes they they uh, say the bacterial phase is a virus that eat bacteria. So uh, this uh, bac uh, this bacterial phase actually for the first time discovered by Thorpe in uh, 1916 and Derel in 1917. They uh, start uh, work with the bacteriophage and then they utilize this phage. But for the first time, use of the bacteriophage is not in agriculture, but in the, the human health. So accordingly, <clears throat> accordingly, uh, according to the uh, International Committee of Taxonomy of Viruses, uh, the ICTV or the committee, they listed it's about uh, 20 family of viruses belong to the bacteriophage or the virus that infect only bacteria. So in, the, in this case, we, we can see this is uh, all, all the member of the family of the viruses that infect bacteria. So not only bacteria in, in uh, bacteria that uh, found in the agriculture, but also in human, in animal, in poultry, and then and the uh, environment. Okay, this is about the twenty uh, family of viruses. Moreover, uh, in uh, two thousand seventeen, so Batimer and friends they listed they listed that bacteriophage and uh, in agriculture, especially in plant productions. There are about five families belongs to uh, the bacteriophage that can be used in agriculture. The first is uh, Myophyridae, Cypophyridae, Odophyridae, Inophyridae, and Lephyphyridae. So there are like uh, five uh, family, five families of uh, virus that can be used in agriculture as biological control and. Uh, here is the some uh, examples that I have done before and some uh, uh, some uh, research that also done with the uh, bacteriophage uh, that use in the agriculture, especially to control the uh, plant pathogenic bacteria. And this is the recently uh, last year's uh, uh, last public uh, last year's publications uh, of me with my group. So. Uh, we found the bacteriophage can infect Ralstonia. This is belong to the Myophyridae. So another uh, another family also found belongs to the Podophyridae. Podophyridae that also, of course, in, infect Ralstonia. And another one is uh, Inophyridae and the Cypophyridae. This is the most uh, family of bacteriophage that found and can be used in the agriculture as biological control. And it is uh, some of uh, the most, most family uh, can be uh, found in agriculture. Okay, <clears throat> this is the, the, the most uh, familiar, familiar picture of the how bacteriophages that infect the bacterial cells. This is most common picture. So after bacteriophage, they attach on the cell surface of the bacteria target, and then they will inject it, and then resulting in uh, resulting in the burst of the bacteria cells. This is like lysis the bacteria lysis the bacteria cell. So this is more simple. But however, so how does the phenomenon occur? So I have to uh, I'd like to to introduce and also uh, uh, explain how this the actually occur so at least uh, because uh, as mentioned before there is uh, there is not only one of bacteriophage family uh, belong to the bacteriophage on agriculture this is the only one example this is the only one examples we can uh, see here this is the bacteriophage belong to the myophyridae because uh, what about the others bacteria like cypophyridae Podophyridae and uh, Inophyridae. So, does the the, the phenomenon the same uh, the same mechanism or they have different mechanism? So, in this case, uh, in 2020, uh, uh, 2020 uh, the recent published uh, recent publications of uh, Saucet 
and friends, they uh, updated updated the, the life cycle of the bacteriophages. Actually, for the first, uh, the most common uh, life cycles published on the scientific paper is uh, lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle. However, the sunset they found, and also this is uh, some of uh, my publication also uh, support this this uh, this uh, idea that there is actually another life cycle of bacteriophage. There, there is a, a lytic cycles, lysogenic cycle, and the new one is chronic cycles. So I, I will explain uh, more detail uh, one of one uh, of this life cycle. So. Uh, this is the bacteriophage they have uh, that have the lytic cycle. They have the lytic cycle, for example, uh, our, uh, bacteriophage of Laustonia sanitarium, uh, RSFD, RSA, and phase uh, RSOP1 IDNs. This is the original from Indonesia. And then uh, they have actually the lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle. However, there is another group of bacteriophage that has no lytic cycle because they only have the lysogenic cycle or a uh, chronic cycle. So let's uh, let's uh, sorry. let's uh, talk more about uh, this li uh, life cycle. Okay, in this uh, in this life uh, life cycles, there is a lytic cycle. So the lytic cycles uh, indicated by the bacterial bacterial host will be killed because they burst and then uh, release the bacteriophage that produced inside the cells. So in these uh, life cycles, virus particles actively infect the other healthy bacterial cells. So uh, once the bacterial cells, uh, I would like to use uh, like pointer, okay. So once the bacterial fits, it fed the, the cells. So they lyse the cell and they release the bacteria, uh, release the phage, and then this phage try to find a new healthy cells to be infected and then uh, produce the, uh, use as the machinery to produce the phase, new phase particles. So this is the lytic cycle. Another cycle is, uh, uh, another cycle is in lysogenic cycles. So in the lysogenic cycles, this is the very dangerous, uh, actually uh, the most uh, researchers on bacteriophage, they concern of this uh, lysogenic cycle because after infection by the bacteriophages, so bacterial cells still alive. So bacterial cells alive without any bar cells because the bacteriophage, the DNA or genetic material of bacteriophage, they integrate into the bacterial host uh, DNA. So there is no activity to produce to produce the new phage particle inside the cells. So this, in in this case, the bacterial uh, the bacterial cells infected with the bacteriophage still alive and then do some activity like uh, like uh, uh, healthy like the health cells. However, after uh, during the lysogenic cycles, uh, the alterations of the bacterial host and properties also uh, exhibit. Okay, uh, some uh, bacteriophage infected during uh, so some bacteria infected with the bacteriophages, and then uh, in the lysogenic cycle, so the bacteria cell become sometimes like more virulence or become avirulence. This is the 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 result of some Seem like the bacterial cells produce bacterial cell uh, produce the the phase cycle the late lytic cycles bacteriophage uh, 
produced inside the cell and then they burst the cells and then bacterial phase out from the cell. However, in the chronic cycle, things produced in the inside the cell and then secrete out like other secretions by the bacteriophage. So this seems like the bacteriophage actually be to the part of the bowel cell. So of course, during this, this cycle, Okay. Uh, in agriculture and in, in some way, uh, researchers like to use the lytic cycle stage to utilize the bacteriophage as biological control. The most people, uh, the most researchers and bacteriophage, they prefer to use this bacteria yeah, and so on the lytic cycle without of course it will be will be better if the bacteriophage has no lysogenic cycle and chronic cycle because once bacterial uh, bacteria infected by the virus so bacteria one must be killed because there is no opportunity become lysogenic cycle or chronic cycle okay uh, this is uh, it was the about the uh, introducing of the bacteriophage and its life cycle. So now I would like to uh, move to the potency of the bacteriophage as a uh, biological control in agriculture. Okay, why must be bacteriophage and what is the potency? I talk about the, uh, the potency of the bacteriophage. We, we I, I, uh, all of you to uh, remind back the history of why bacteriophages uh, nowadays in the publication and the mass production. So in previous times, before the antibiotic vow by, by the Alexander Fleming and then uh, people, they use bacteriophages Actually, they use bacteriophage as a uh, uh, 1915 and move until uh, 1942. There's the increase of the use of the bacteriophage. So, in this case, there is no, and instead of use of bacteriophage, once the antibiotic found and then starting to release so we can see the the increase in the, the drama uh, dramatically increase of the use of antibiotic however nowadays we found many publications many researchers found that the negative effect negative effects of the use of antibiotics so of course uh, like antibiotic resistance issue so this is the issue why now they, they try to find another uh, another way, another alternative to control the bacteria, especially bacterial that harmful for the the uh, human and the environment. Like uh, of course, including in bacteria, uh, phytopathogenic bacteria in, in the agriculture. So this is the one big issue now. This is why people try to okay. So in a more day, and then this can induce the resistance uh, issue, and then this has become a, a new problem in agriculture. So this is why uh, nowadays they try to find the alternative and back to the successful uh, story, success story of the use of bacteriophage since uh, uh, 1915 and 1929. During the World uh, World Two, uh, they use this uh, antimicrobial agents based on the live uh, live uh, uh, things. Okay, uh, this is in agriculture. So if we found okay, uh, some uh, farmers they spray an antibiotics or the uh, 
but in Indonesia, maybe not, not so much antibiotic spray on the field, but they use the like uh, 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 synthetic chemical like pesticides. So the residue become accumulated not only on the plants and but also environment not only only not only for the grass that uh, and the grass on the plant but however the living organism living organism in the in the water and then the poultry and also this is the most important thing is microbial uh, community in the soil because the pesticide or antibiotic they accumulated uh, accumulate the residues in the soil and affect the all mostly all organism in the soil so this is the problem because we know that organism in the soil they have some some of them has the good uh, effect or impact on the, to the plants for example like uh, like uh, mycorrhiza, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, plant growth promoting fungi. This is uh, the beneficial organism living all together with the plants and support the plant to be uh, to grow uh, uh, to to promote the growth of the plants. However, we, when the farmers they spray the antibiotics, so we can predict that these or uh, these living microorganisms sometimes affected and then uh, killed and then the they population become more low, lower lower and then this affected the plant growth also so this is why uh, people try to back to the uh, the bacteriophage so this is the proof that has been published uh, by uh, Sudin in uh, 2018 this is uh, they reported that the application of antibiotics increase the resistance of the bacteria especially plant pathogenic bacteria because there the actually the bacteria has a mechanism a defense mechanism against the the antibiotics so this is why uh, this is uh, dangerous if we the pharma use uh, const, uh, constantly or consistently use the pesticide or antibiotic without uh, care about the dose and then the time. So this is the problem. So if this happens, so uh, any antibiotic, any pesticide cannot more longer control the bacteria. So this one, we can see that the potency of the uh, bacteria. What is the potency? Because we know we have to find alternative solutions of using uh, bacteriophage as biological control agent. The first one, we, we know the bacteriophage is a predator. They are a natural enemy of the plant pathogenic bacteria available in nature. They are, uh, if they bound and they, they uh, interact with the host, they become like living organism, like living things. But when they have, uh, they uh, cannot find the host, they become like only uh, non-living things like uh, particles. So they can actually easily found in the nature. And in the second ones, uh, where, uh, while the bacteriophage uh, apply into the soil and apply into the uh, environment, as long as they found the bacterial host or the bacterial target, they, the number will be, uh, become increased as long as uh, the bacterial cells, uh, the bacterial target cells are accessible. So, this is, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, and, and the first time that this is a nature enemy, and they only live if they found the bacterial host. If they don't found the bacterial host, they like non-living organism, like non-living things. So they need one. As long as there is a host available on the environment, they still alive, and then produce the number will increase. So also, this is the one thing, the potency of the use of bacteriophage as biological control is remain no residue like pesticide and antibiotic dust. So this is like, like na natural things can be found in the nature. So when we apply, when 
more time we apply every uh, every time there is no residue uh, harmful to the environment because they are they are uh, uh, cannot uh, remain uh, the residue on the in the field and in addition the fed also generally have a narrow host range they are uh, very specific uh, they have a very specific target okay if the environment in the for example in the rhizosphere there are a lot of micro uh, microbes in, in the field okay uh, in 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 the in the rhizosphere so these bacteriophages they they only invade the bacterial target for example in the soil they have uh, there are a lot of microorganisms like uh, pseudomonas fluorescens, uh, pseudomonas pida, bacillus thuringiensis, bacillus tiris, bacillus serius, and staphylococcus, uh, uh, streptomyces, for example. And also, in one moment, there are also some populations of uh, the pathogenic bacteria, for example, like Erminia uh, pectobacterium carotophorum, uh, the soft fruit uh, pathogen on, on some uh, horticulture. So when the bacteriophage are uh, specifically infect the pectobacterium, although there are more more populations of there, there are a lot of uh, community of bacteria, but they are only infect the pectobacterium. This is more specific. This is uh, different. This is one uh, beneficial of using bacteriophage compared to the, uh, for example, antibiotics. Some antibiotics they have broad spectrum effect. They have good spectrum effect to the, the microbial community in the soil. So this is why this is the potency of bacteriophage uh, to be used as biological control agent. And also the most things in agriculture, we uh, researchers and government, they only uh, campaign about uh, integrated pest management. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, actually the, the bacteriophage, they compatible with the other integrated pest management because in some some report the actually bacteriophage they are compatible with the use of some chemical for example uh, in in the term of of uh, uh, integrated pest management they also uh, compatible with the host uh, resistance they compatible to be applied with all together with the another bacteria the biological control agent without any impact to the uh, other bacterial control agent, for example, like uh, bacterial biological control agent, fungi uh, biological control agent, and so on. Okay, this is the potency. As I mentioned before, this is the proof that uh, this is belongs to also my my work during the in, in 2018. The bacteriophage the actually is a specific species or a species specific or genus specific and even strain specific they are a very specific very narrow host so because uh, this is one things that uh, bacteriophage uh, become more uh, safe to be used in uh, as biological control they only control their targets and they cannot uh, cannot target another bacteria that not belong to the target and especially uh, if the bacterial target the bacterial is different genus and also sometimes the different species they cannot infect this bacteria because they have very narrow uh, narrow uh, targets this is the example for example in Ralstonia there are a lot of strains there are a lot of uh, biofar they have they has uh, a lot of of uh, like five phases and some sometimes uh, like uh, seven biophars strains and in this case we can see here we found that the bacteriophages they are uh, they uh, are very specific only in fact the res 3 biophar 2 strain of ralstonia solana serum this is the very dangerous and select agent in usa and sometimes in the egypt and Oh, uh, although the the Ralstonia solanaceum, another stra uh, another race of the Ralstonia solanaceum, the same Ralstonia solanaceum, but belongs to the another another uh, race and non race three by four two. So the bacteriophage cannot infect this strain. 
even uh, although they are the same same uh, species this is the I, uh, we call this is strain specific so it is why we need uh, this bacteriophage we we can use this bacteriophage because of the specific uh, specificity of the target host so next this is also as I mentioned before, the bacteriophage, uh, as long as they found the host, they become uh, increase in number. And then sometimes in one one cell, they can produce until uh, approximately like 130 particles per cell. If we found in the in the in the in the soil, for example, there are like a million bacterial cells, we can multiply it with 130 particle per cell if all cells become uh, uh, all cells are infected by the, the bacteriophage one cell become brass at least like six hours after infections and sometimes 20 uh, minutes after infection so it's they grow fastly so this is the the examples this is uh, of uh, one of my my work previous time and then this is how the bacteriophage can protect uh, plant from the infection of uh, raustonia this is the and you found also the bacteriophage actually they protect the root from the infection the bacteria uh, actually they can still alive outside the bacteria this is outside the the root but they cannot in, infect they cannot infect the root and then enter the root and uh, colonize the xylems so this is the the, the result that we found uh, by using the bacteriophage this is actually the bacteriophage that belongs to the chronic cycle. So another case is also, this is similar. So this is uh, like uh, myofresh uh, that also control the Santomonas axonomatis canker, uh, canker uh, disease in citrus. So we can compare this one in the upper uh, upper sides. This is the wild type the without uh, application of uh, experiment of inoculation. Uh, Santomonas axonopodis without uh, bacteriophage and the bottom side, this is the application bacteriophage and, and, and inoculated with the bacteria. So we can see, compare that the, the disease, the symptom drastically reduced uh, by the application of uh, bacteriophages. Okay, this is the, also the recent publications so just published in December to December 10th, 2020, just published a, a few days ago. So this is, we found also the, the bacteriophage uh, potential to control the Santomonas oryza, Patafar oryza and rice. So we can see here the application drastically reduced in in vitro, but of course we still need the, to prove in the, in the field experimental. And then this is the against uh, the care, uh, the Dante applications of the bacteriophage drastically reduce the number of the plants uh, compared to the uh, infected plants. Yeah, only infected by the decaya, the pathogen, without any application of bacteriophages. So how to obtain uh, and utilizing the bacteriophage? Actually, uh, bacteriophage can be easily found in nature. While uh, the most important thing we have to select the good location, select the, 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 the accurate location, how to collect the sample that contain bacteriophage. If you, we are going to, if we would like to isolate bacteriophage from uh, that effective to control the Santomonas oryza, the leaf blight pathogen on rice, so better if we collect the sample from the rice field. So this is almost impossible if you found an, an another never planting organ, uh, never planting uh, uh, rice field, and then we collect the sample to isolate the bacteriophage that effective to uh, rice pathogen. So this is difficult. So it's why we, we can we can we can uh, collect this one. Uh, uh, we call and isolate the bacteriophage with this way. So bacterial uh, isolation can be done through direct isolation on enrichment isolation. So selecting appropriate phase is crucial step during the isolation phase for biological control. Okay, uh, this is the simple steps. So we can use the plaque assay. So we can see this is a, a clear zone. So one, one uh, plaque here represents from one particle. So we can collect its uh, plaque here and then multiply it and then propagate it and then 
make the bacteriophage uh, uh, number become increase, and then we can use this as biological control agent. Before we use this one, we, before we use the bacteriophage as, uh, as a biological control, we have to confirm that the bacteriophage cannot, uh, uh, is not, uh, do not uh, alter the bacterial host virulence because sometimes if they have lysogenic cycle, this is the problem. If we, we, we don't care about this one, so the biological control strategy become failed. Okay, uh, the other way we can use a spot assay. This is the indicator. If you found that the uh, in the soil sample or the water samples or the leaves samples, Contain the bacteriophage, or the there is a bacteriophage on the on the on the sample. We can easily use the bacterial target host, and then we can see the indicator like uh, clear spot and or clear plaque here. So this is the indications. So the most pro, uh, the most uh, important thing we should require the sterile uh, sterile uh, me, uh, filter membrane. Normally, like 0 0.45 micrometer in diameter uh, in, in the mass. Okay, utilizing bacteriophage. So how we can use the bacteriophage uh, and, uh, and apply uh, bacteriophage in, 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 the, in the field? There are two ways for utilizing bacteriophage as biological control. So direct applications by soil drenching and plant spray after you uh, after a mass production of the bacteriophage or indirect application. We can uh, in inject the cell infected mediated resistance. This is uh, almost uh, the analogy seem like uh, vaccination, uh, vaccination of the plants. So we can vaccine, actually it's not the vaccine uh, itself, but this is the, the mode of action almost uh, similar to, to vaccine in the human. We can induce the plant resistance using this uh, cells infected mediated resistance. Okay, uh, the one thing in util, uh, utilizing bacteriophage is the stability of phage and bacterial strain resistance. Of course, uh, we know that the bacteriophage, some reports say that bacteriophage, they can resist, uh, the bacteria can resist against the infection of bacteriophage because, like nowadays, we know the CRISPR Cas9 mechanism. So, of course, this is the one problem of utilizing the bacteriophage. So how to use this one? So first we, we, we see here the uh, problem in utilizing phase as a resin cell. So we can see this is the proof after infections and the bacteria become increased and increased. This is also, they can reduce the growth of the bacterial target, but after some while, the bacterial cells target become increased in the populations. So this is the problem. So how to solve this problem? So uh, many applications said, okay, Many publications uh, suggest to use phage in cocktail form and mix uh, bacteriophage. So this is the, the, the proof the how uh, cocktail application has a strong inhibition ability compared to the individual phage application. So we can see here, this is the, this is the cocktail, house cocktail application and, and compared to one, one uh, the, the strongest one. So this is, uh, cocktail also. So cocktail always uh, show the good and then uh, in good strong inhibitions compared to the individual phage particle. So we can see also here. And <clears throat> another case in this change 2019 also found that if the cocktail compared to the individual application, so the cocktail uh, show the good results in inhibition of uh, bacterial cells populations. So this is why the, the suggestion to use the bacteriophage in cocktail is more recommended. And also another phase stability, we can see the in environment because phase is a virus particle uh, surrounded by the protein and uh, nucleic acid. They are sometimes uh, very uh, labile in the environment because, uh, of, uh, because of pH and then uh, temperature and sometimes uh, uh, UV light. In some uh, publications, the UV is the, the most uh, dangerous environment factors against the 
the stability of bacteriophage. So this is why it form. Okay, uh, they make the formulation. So in some some publication also they found here, they published this one. They formulated so when the exposure the formulate after application bacteriophage in formulated and then compared to the non formulated after exposure with the UV we found they found here they reported uh, Ramses uh, Ramirez in 2018 they they reported that the bacteriophage in formulated still stable still survive to go to to uh, suppress the uh, bacterial host population compared to the and formulated one. So this is why uh, uh, phase must be in, in the formulated. If uh, we know the environment factors uh, surrounding the uh, crop uh, crop field or the, the crop field is uh, extremely affected to the uh, bacterial phase. And the last uh, point here, the phase formulations. So to enhance the stability uh, of fish before application and storage purpose, there are three kind of formulations. Sometimes they can uh, people they they formulate uh, fish in liquid. This is a very simple one after after mass production or uh, fermentation of the bacteria to produce and propagate the bacteriophages, and then they. Uh, uh, collecting the uh, virus particles and they put on the and the liquid form liquid like a water contain like salt gelatin bovine zero albumin need to improve the stability and it can prolong the the stability of the face before it used in the field also another formulation is solid formulations and semi-solid formulations so this one uh, uh, the phase formulation has been published, uh, suggested uh, by the Van den Hovel in 2015, uh, how the bacteriophage can be formulated. So recently, many many uh, researchers they published the the good way to uh, formulate the bacteriophage in micro encapsulation. This has become become more trend in in bacteriophage because this is a very simple one and then uh, good in keep stability of the bacteriophages. Okay, I think uh, it's my presentations about the, and share about the bacteriophage utilization in agriculture. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Hadian, Susu Adi. And thanks for very interesting material, especially about the way virus to eat the bacteria. About lytic cycle, lysogenic and chronic, and also the bacterial phage, how to isolate the bacterial phage and how to utilize bacterial phage for control bacteria for minimize the antibiotic and bactericide, the pesticide for bacteria without have impact other microbes. Thank you. And second speakers, I will call Mr. Baba Supiani PhD. And before I give him half hour for for present this material, let I read Mr. Supiani PhD CV. Please, committee. Mr. Supiani is a lecturer on Sebelas Mart University. He took education of master degree in Okayama University, Japan, and also he took his PhD in same university, Okayama University, Japan. His expertise about the plant virology. And today will be bring about the microvirus development in the nature. 
and about the publication we have published many many publication about the uh, mycovirus one of them is with entitled a uh, real virus of fun fungus trypopnectria parasitica that is infectious as particles and related to the cultivar genus on animal pathogens I published on journal of biology american society for microbiology in 2004 so mr Shipiani. Thirty minutes time is yours. Hello, Mr. Supiani. Your speaker is still unmuted. Okay. Can you hear my voice now? Yeah, clearly. Okay. Great. Okay. okay. Well, many thanks to Mr. Moderator, Papa Ali Wafa, MSE. So, firstly, I would like to uh, share my slide. Okay, and then first I would like to confirm from you. Uh, I would like to get confirm from uh, you. Uh, can you see my slide? Yeah, can you see my slide, Bapak Ali? Not yet, Mr. Sipi. Not yet? Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Okay, can you see my slide? Okay. Well, and then uh, can you see the movement of the arrow, the movement of the pointer? Can you yep. see? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. uh, many thanks to uh, Mr. Moderator, Baba Ali Wafa MSE. Yeah. So. All right, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Yeah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So in this moment, yeah, first day I would like to uh, express yeah, my deepest thanks to the committee, yeah, and especially to Papa Hardian PhD, yeah, for giving me opportunity yeah, to join this uh, webinar. Yeah. Well, uh, let me uh, start my presentation. Yeah, so the title of my presentation is uh, microvirus for controlling fungal disease on plants. So, firstly, yeah, let's see uh, this. Yeah, some uh, term. Yeah, the number one is uh, viral control. Yeah, means using viruses as biological control agent. Yeah, we have many examples here. Yeah, and one of the most popular is using uh, insect virus. Yeah, or uh, entomovirus to control plant pests, yeah, especially from the order of uh, Leptoptera yeah, and also uh, Polyptera, yeah, as also will be presented yeah, by Dr. Yayi and also Dr. Lau in the next session. Yeah. And then example number two is, this is the, the expertise of Dr. Hardian yeah, just uh, uh, presented yeah, uh, using of bacteriophage yeah, for control uh, plant disease yeah, caused by uh, bacteria. And we also still have one more example, yeah, using a virus to control virus. Yeah. We can use, uh, uh, I mean, um, mild isolate of plant virus yeah, to protect the plant from infection of the severe uh, isolate. Well, number two is uh, microvirus. Yeah, microvirus means virus that infect fungi. This virus also can be used, can be developed as biological control agent. Yeah, 
and regarding uh, using the microvirus for peer control agent, yeah, let's see in the next slide. Yeah, this is a kind of, I mean, this is an illustration. And uh, I mean, in, in the field, yeah, in the field, this phenomenon can happen. Yeah, let's see in this, this figure, yeah. Uh, uh, in the left, yeah, this is a disease plant. Yeah. This disease is caused by uh, a fungus, like fungus, Rosalina necatri. Yeah. And this fungus, in fact, especially in the basal of the stem, like this, yeah. And uh, after a period of time, yeah, after a period of time, yeah, with or without human intervention, this disease can heal, yeah, so to be like in the right, yeah, the plan to be happy like this. So the healing of the disease can be uh, due, yeah, can due to many factors, yeah, and one of the factor is the role of microvirus. So in this case, yeah, the microvirus come, yeah, and then infects this uh, viral and fungus, yeah, and then a chain, yeah, or convert to hypovirulent. And by the way, we know that plant also has a kind of ability yeah, to struggle, to defend a kind of pathogen. Because in this case, the pathogen already hypovirulent, so the plant win, yeah, and finally the disease here, yeah, and the plant to be healthy again, like, like in the right, yeah. So from here, we can consider that the microvirus, yeah, can be used to control fungal plant pathogen. Well, and so far, this disease, about this disease, yeah, people control using a chemical pesticide, yeah, chemical fungicide. And we know that the application of agrochemical to the feed, yeah, to the plant, has many negative impact, yeah, uh, including a harmful, yeah, to a human, to organ organized or organism, yeah, and also uh, has environmental hazard, yeah, and uh, the other negative uh, impact is, I mean, negative value, yeah, uh, the expensive yeah. so well, from this case then uh, my co-virologist uh, offer yeah give a kind of offer uh viral control or my co-viral control uh, concept yeah so regarding uh my virus for a biocontrol agent yeah it has many advantages yeah just like uh, the other biocontrol agent, yeah, and uh, so already explained by Dr. Hardian, yeah, including that environmentally friendly, yeah, safe to use, durable, yeah, and also uh, it can use as a, I mean, preventive and curative, yeah, and also specific to the target. Yeah. Well, then this is a uh, viral control concept, or I mean, uh, micro viral control concept, yeah. Uh, let's see the figure yeah, in the left. Yeah, this is a healthy tree, and then this healthy tree was uh, infected by viral and fungus. Yeah, so to be a disease in the middle, and then in this type, um, microvirus come. Yeah, and then infect. Yeah, the microvirus come and then infect the viral and fungus. Yeah, and convert to hypovirulent. And then finally, yeah, the uh, this is here, yeah, and uh, the plant on the tree to be healthy again. So this is the key principle of uh, my co control concept. Well, uh, this is a kind of evidence in which the microvirus can cause the hypovirulent on host. Yeah, let's see the figure in the left. Yeah, this is a uh, fungal isolate. Yeah, this fungal isolate is virus free and yeah, no virus. Yeah, and we can see the uh, phenotype here. Yeah, yeah, the color is yellow. Yeah, around, yellow. Yeah, around yellow. Yeah, and then if we inoculate it to the indicator plant, then this isolate can cause a severe disease uh, like this. Yeah, in the bottom. Yeah, and then let's see figure in the middle. Yeah, this isolate is isogenic. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, genetically the uh, same as in the left. Yeah, so uh, people say isogenic. And this is infected by microvirus. 
so we can see here that by microfluidic infection, uh, the colony change, yeah, this one, yeah, in the middle to be white, yeah, and also the colony, yeah, growing slower. Yeah. And after inoculated, yeah, to the indicator plan, we can see here yeah, only cause mild disease. And then let's see in the right, yeah, the last one. This is also, uh, I mean, the this uh, fungal isolate, yeah, also isogenic to other, yeah, to the life and also to the middle. But this is infected by the RL microvirus, yeah. So the phenotype colony are so different. So uh, I mean, typical microvirus then cause a typical uh, colony phenotype, yeah, and also a typical virulence. Yeah. So uh, this one, yeah, if inoculated to the indicator plant, that cause uh, medium disease. Well, uh, let's see. This is the simple method, uh, kind of common method to recognize whether uh, hypotrend isolate uh, contain microvirus. Yeah. So uh, this one yeah, in the right is uh, virus-free isolate, and in the right, yeah, in the left is uh, viral isolate, and the right is uh, my, uh, I mean, hypofiroline isolate, yeah. Both are isogenic, yeah, but they show a uh, different phenotype, yeah. And then both preparation was subjected to total RNA extraction, yeah, and then the result of uh, uh, electrophoresis, yeah, if you can see here that in, in the sample from the hypofiroline isolate, yeah, we can see here has typical Band of double strand RNA that we cannot see in the final line. And, and after PENSEC, yeah, through double strand RNA uh, purification, yeah, finally we are sure yeah, that it has uh, contained or harboring uh, 11 band, yeah, means 11 segments of uh, microfluidic genome. And this is typical of a rare virus on the member of a rare Pretty differently. Well, and then this is uh, how to uh, examine or how to uh, observe and the first particle. Yeah. So it's just like as a previous slide, yeah. And then both uh, preparation subjected to virus particle extraction. Yeah. And then after sucrose gradient centrifugation, yeah, we can see here that the uh, preparation from the hypofluorine isolate, we can see it has a slight pan here, yeah, that we cannot see in the viral isolate. And after observe, yeah, observing in under microscopy electron, we can see here that uh, there are some virus particle, and this is also typical of a rare virus. Yeah, a member of the rheophilus, uh, rheophilidae family. Well, uh, this is uh, about the research on microvirus. Yeah. So until 2005, the discovery of, of microvirus yeah, has uh, covered uh, five families, yeah, including totifiridae, chrysophilidae, hypophilidae, narnafilidae, and, and also rheophilidae. Yeah. And this also in uh, to, I mean, 2005, yeah, that there are more than 10, yeah, there are more than 10 relationship yeah, between virus and host, yeah, already studied uh, intensively. And uh, recently, the research on microvirus uh, going fast, yeah, going very fast. And uh, in 2017, yeah, you can see yet that this is in the last ICTV report, yeah, that the discovery of microvirus already covered a certain family. So this is clear. Well, uh, this is uh, some example of how to apply the microvirus, yeah, including in the laboratory or in the greenhouse or in the field. So this one, this uh, application of microvirus in the field is an example of a successful yeah, uh, microvirus control in the field. In this case, to control uh, Cessna light and Cessna tree with infected by fungus Cryptomyces parasitica. 
So let's see the figure yeah, in the left. This is a severe canker that infected with the virulent Gryponetia parasitica. Yeah. And then scientists just uh, prepare the hypovirulent isolate yeah, in the laboratory. And then just inoculated yeah, in the surrounding of the canker. Yeah. Then uh, after a period of time, yeah, the heap high from the from post fungus uh, grow, yeah, lengthen, lengthen, and finally they join it other, yeah. And during the join uh, of the heap pie, then uh, uh, the fusion, the anastomosis is happen, yeah. And then during, during this anastomosis, then virus transmitted, yeah, from the hypofluent to the viral end. Uh, finally, uh, in fact, the viral end one, and then convert it to the hypofluent end. And after a period of time, the thesis here, yeah, and the plan to be healthy again. Well, this is the other application of uh, microfars in the, this is in the laboratory, yeah. This is very simple, so just uh, look like uh, fungal inoculation, yeah, fungal inoculation. So let's see in the figure, yeah, in the upper, yeah, this is uh, many isolate of, uh, Fungus, yeah. In this case, is Sclerotinia sclerotiorum. So, uh, Sclerotinia sclerotiorum, yeah, reported has many a kind of microvirus. Yeah. So in this one, yeah, and the left is virus free, yeah, no virus, and the other is each isolate is isolate. I mean, infected with a specific microvirus. Yeah. So, so, so in the upper is the name of uh, microvirus. Yeah. So we can see yet yeah, that uh, the in microbes infection then change the penotype colony. Yeah. So specific microvirus then specific colony penotype. Yeah. And then after infected or inoculated on the indicator plant, yeah, in this case uh, using just a uh, leaf, yeah, in the surface of the light uh, and the only, uh, I mean, in the surface of the leaf, yeah, uh, we can see yet yeah, that the virus free cause a severe disease, yeah. Whereas the other, the hypofluent, yeah, only cause my disease or even no disease. Yeah. And among this, this uh, microvirus, yeah, and sclerotinia sclerotiorum, yeah, this one, yeah, as as HADV one is uh, special, special microvirus this one. Uh, but this one then uh, explained in the next slide, yeah, this one, yeah. So. The name of this virus is Ferulon, this one, yeah. Sclerotinia, sclerotiorum, hypovirulent associated DNA virus one, yeah, very long. SS8HDV1, SS8HDV1, yeah. This virus is different with other, other microvirus, I mean, yeah. This genome is DNA, number one, yeah. And then number two, this virus is infectious as particle. You know, so uh, we can see the figure here. Yeah, this is the colony of uh, fungus, yeah, host, fungal host, yeah. And then in this area, yeah, pointed by arrow, is applicated or, I mean, uh, ap applicated using virus particle, yeah, by dropping, yeah, just drop the virus particle, yeah, in this area. Yeah, we can see here yeah, that the colony here is limited in growing, uh, I mean, doesn't grow or just limited in growing. And then how we apply this virus in uh, to control a disease, yeah, as pointed by in the next slide, this one, yeah. So let's see uh, in the middle, yeah, this, the middle, uh, the middle lane is uh, control. I mean, as comparison, yeah, using a fungicide chemical, this one, carbidazim, yeah. And then the upper lane using virus particle, yeah. And we can see here yeah, that the virus particle. Yeah, can control the disease as good as the chemical fungicide. Yeah. So from here, we can consider that uh, uh, a microvirus, yeah, uh, people can make or can formulate a kind of bio fungicide yeah, using virus particle as active ingredient. Well, and then, this is the other application of microvirus. Yeah, this is for uh, typically for uh, soybean fungal pathogen. Yeah, so just this just similar to application uh, similar to application of uh, uh, 
trichoderma, for example, yeah. So it's just applicated to the soil, yeah. So we can see here that the, the preparation that without microvirus, uh, the plant died. Well, and then there's just, uh, just the other application for soil bone fungal pathogen. In this case, in this case, it used a stem, yeah, cut stem, but at here is uh, was buried in the uh, soil, yeah, because this is uh, uh, soil bone pathogen. Yeah. So we can see here that uh, sample number two and number three yeah, without uh, microvirus, yeah, we can see that the uh, fungus growing well. This one. All right, yeah. yeah, well, this is the, I mean, and the source of my previous slide, yeah, and this one. And then uh, let me show you uh, some uh, reset, yeah, that we already done in our country, yeah, about uh, microvirus, yeah. mostly about uh, still in exploration, yeah. Uh, number one, uh, uh, firstly, we, uh, uh, I mean, uh, explore yeah, microvirus from the uh, fusarium. Yeah. At the time, we collected uh, fusarium isolate from many fish yeah, in the in uh, Central Java. Yeah, this including from uh, Chile. Yeah, this is from um, potato. Yeah, and Monosopo, and this one in. Uh, uh, vegetable yeah, and uh, and also from the other field yeah and then all the collected isolate of fusarium then we uh, i mean all the collected uh, isolate yeah then subjected to uh, morphological assay it's simple yeah we just uh, culture on uh, pda on the pen stop yeah. and then from here we can recognize yeah we can uh, mark which colony uh, showing unusual phenotype, yeah? for example, the color unusual, and then also probably the growing of the colony slower and something like that. Yeah? And then uh, we can uh, collect them. Yeah? And also we can make a kind of grouping. Yeah? So in this, in this case, yeah, we make a five group yeah? based on the colony morphology yeah? or colony phenotype. And then and the selected isolate subjected to uh, virulent assay. This is also for screening. Uh, we use apple fruit, yeah. So just we uh, inoculate, yeah. We inoculated the uh, uh, fungal isolate to the hole, yeah, on the apple, yeah. And then we just measure the lesion here. And from this uh, assay, yeah, we get the result like this, yeah. So uh, two isolates, yeah, two isolate in the left are uh, virulent, whereas the other, yeah, in the right, uh, hypovirulent, yeah. And then the uh, collected isolate then subjected to uh, total RNA extraction, yeah, and then the result is like this. Yeah, we can see again the uh, sample number C15, yeah, this one, yeah. This yeah. is shows a typical uh, band, yeah, and this is somehow a genome of a microvirus, or, or at least has relationship with uh, microvirus infection. Well, and then we also uh, conducted yeah, a kind of uh, risk collaboration, and in this case with RND PT Abadi located in Prawan, Sumatra, yeah, with Dr. Budi Cahyono, yeah, of, uh, in this moment, yeah, Dr. Budi Cahyono also uh, joined this webinar, yeah. And this moment, yeah, we, uh, I mean, in this collaboration, we send some students to explore microvirus, yeah, uh, from fungi that infecting uh, forestry, especially from uh, acacia and eucalyptus. Yeah. And this slide was made uh, prepared by Dr. Budi. Yeah. And this is some uh, fungus that we, I mean, from where we collect uh, microfires, yeah. Pelinus and then Ganoderma, Simdocratium and other. And one of the research 
is this one, yeah, collecting of uh, uh, exploring microcrust from Kletotrichum. And the Kletotrichum isolate, we collected from many sources, yeah, this from Acacia, yeah, from Chile and other. And this is the result of uh, virulent assay. Yeah, we can see at the left is virulent, yeah, with the other uh, hypervirulent. And then after, I mean, uh, the preparation and yeah, this preparation then uh, subjected to uh, double send RNA or total RNA extraction. Yeah, and the result is like this. Uh, you can see it that the uh, isolate number T9, yeah. You can see T9, yeah. This pan hypofrolen, yeah. Uh, source a typical pan, yeah, that we cannot see in the, in the other isolate, yeah. And here also is somehow uh, the genome of uh, microfibers. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think my presentation is uh, enough, yeah. Thank you very much for your attention, yeah. and. I give back yeah, the time to Mr. Moderator, yeah, Papa Ali Baba. Please, yeah. many thanks, Papa. Thank you, Mr. Sipiani. Uh, and thanks for interesting material, especially about how to use a viral control concept for fungal production and how to utilize it on a forestry, uh, fruits, and others. And so, all participants, in first session, we have studied about two different virus, the bacteriophage and the microvirus. And as I have informed to you before, after two speaker, first two speakers have presented the material, we open the discussion session, session one. So for all participants, you can ask your question directly by raise your hand or write your question in chat rooms. And we have a first question. Please commit it so the PPT of question. We have a question for Mr. Hardian from Mr. Pascal for from Benin. The consul, he is consultant of International Institute of Tropical Agriculture of Benin. So I feel honored to for the participant, the participant from Benin, Africa. If I'm not mistaken, in his country still might not there. And uh, I think it's 2 a.m. Uh, late night. Thank you for your participant reading and reading from Indonesia. Uh, the question from the Mr. Pascal for Mr. Hardian is about how African farmers like in Benin can profit with the bacteriophage. Again, Mr. Hardian, uh, about the how African farmers like in Benin can profit this with this virus, especially on your bacterial fish. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. So, before I'd like to thank to the uh, participant from Benin. I, I'm so appreciated your your attendance to this seminar. We we know actually uh, in the, in the South Africa now they like uh, early morning maybe oh. <laughs> early morning. <laughs> so but okay, uh, I'm so appreciate for for the questions. So uh, if I don't miss the questions, uh, so can African farmer profit? Do you mean profit or take benefit? Uh, can can you? Uh, uh, I'll spell again the, the so maybe I, I I I cannot get your your. I think it's about how can uh, farmers can 
take a benefit from the virus. Okay. Uh, okay. If the the question is how, okay. So let me see. Can profit this virus? Okay. Uh, actually, this uh, bacteriophage, as I mentioned in my presentation, it's uh, very easy to find uh, to found in the uh, to find in in the field. Uh, as long as we know the accurate locations, uh, by meaning, if we are going to collect the bacteriophage that uh, will be used for the uh, biological control of specific or particular plant, for example, if tomato, and then our target, okay, tomato uh, recently under attack by the bacterial wilt disease, so we only uh, we can easily found the bacteriophage that infect uh, this pathogen from a similar field. Not only in, 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 the, in, in the field that attacked by the bacteria, but also in other uh, similar plants, okay, similar plants uh, or similar field. I mean, if there is a tomato crop, so we can collect the soil or even we can collect the uh, sample from the plant part and then we do some isolations. So of course the farmer can get this benefit because okay, uh, this is not so difficult to, to, uh, to maintain after once we uh, do mass productions, okay, we apply to the soil, especially in the soil because the, the uh, condition in the soil is not so, so extremely compared to the philosphere. So just apply to the field as long as they have the bacterial, uh, the bacterial target, the bacterial host, they can maintain themselves and then increase the number as long as they can access the bacterial target in the field. So of course, by meaning this one, we only need like one application and then leave them to, uh, to growth or increase the number themselves. So this is not so, so, so complicated because compared to other fields. Sometimes we need to apply, apply again, apply again. So this is one of the benefits of uh, using this virus to control, bacterial, uh, to control the bacterial disease on uh, plant. I hope uh, this can uh, satisfy you, <laughs> can answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, for me, it will be a good if uh, the same question to deliver to Mr. Supriani. It's possible apply a microvirus in Africa, Mr. Supriani? Sorry, your ear is still unmuted. Okay, well, many thanks to the question. Okay, so similar as uh, explained by Adrian, yeah, so we can also, yeah. We can also apply microvirus in anywhere. Yeah? So the first step will be we just explore. Yeah? We just explore uh, microvirus from the field. Yeah? So just, I mean, like uh, already explained by Dr. Hardian. Yeah? So uh, microvirus also they're available in anywhere. Yeah? Uh, so also similar to bacteriophage. So we explore and then we uh, I mean, a little bit of simple assay. We choose uh, which one as hypofluent and can apply to the field. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chibin. Uh, we have another question. Please, committee, show the PPT of question. Uh, it's a question for you, Mr. Sipiani, about how we can understand the fungal colonies in Petri dish was infected by microvirus, not other, not other uh, like temperature on or UV and others. From my student. Okay. 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 Well, so many thanks. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So uh, we can, I mean, to recognize yeah that uh, a fungal isolate is 
uh, is uh, are boring yeah or infected with macrophages yeah we have many step yeah we have many step but in the first step yeah uh, the simple or AC uh, method is just to uh, see the colony morphology yeah? the colony morphology because uh, usually or uh, in general yeah uh, fungal insulate which infected with microvirus, then the colony phenotype will change. Yeah. Especially in the color, yeah? the color, and then also in the area, HIFA, yeah? and also uh, the, I mean, and the colony growth rate also decreased. Yeah? And then number two, we can check the virulent. Yeah? So we can use some, I mean, plan, indicator plan, such as Apple, yeah? to just to screen. Yeah? If they are uh, at home or not. Yeah. And then, if uh, I mean, con already confirmed that they are hypovirulent, yeah, that they are hypovirulent by screening, then we can do the next assay yeah, just by total RNA extraction. And the result of electroprocess, and we can see that they have typical band yeah, and, and, and not present in the other. I mean, not present in the fetal end one, so we are sure that uh, that isolate contain microvirus. And from this, we can we can do directly yeah, to, I mean, to control the disease. Yeah. But if we uh, we need to uh, know more about the virus, so we can do the next uh, step of uh, uh, research. Yeah, but. If we just only to get the microvirus, yeah, just until I mean, uh, uh, final assay, yeah, and then we confirm by uh, RNA extraction, yeah, couple DNA extraction. I think it's enough. Yeah, we can get microvirus. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the first we recognize the microvirus is a change color in fungi mm -hmm. colony, right? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Cipriani. And we have another question for you. Yes. For yes. from Mrs. Rosmarani Setiawati. Yeah. And she will ask about what we have a uh, research about the microvirus for control the pathogenic fungi in uh, plantation. And second is how about the prospect of the microvirus development in Indonesia, especially? Oh yeah, okay, okay, many thanks. Yeah, so uh, number one, yeah, I tell you that the, uh, I mean my recent on microvirus, yeah, in Indonesia, yeah, almost almostly is still an, an exploration, yeah, an exploration. Uh, we already caught some. Yeah, we already got some isolate, yeah, but we still keep and we still export, yeah, until now, we, until now, yeah, we can uh, shoot them to some recent, uh, some recent, uh, I mean, some uh, research center, yeah, to still export the microfinance. And then number two, what about the prospect? I mean, the prospect in our country is very good, yeah, because we know that uh, in our country, our country is located in the tropical area. We know that in the tropical area, we have many, uh, I mean, many, uh, many organisms, many strain, yeah? many strain of organism, yeah, many strain of microorganisms. Yeah, so uh, we have high, uh, I mean, a biotic diversity. Yeah? We have. Uh, high biotic diversity, so uh, we have a high chance yeah, to get a microvirus uh, from a fungal colony yeah, in our country. I think so. The prospect is, I mean, very good. We just reset, yeah. We just reset and reset. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sibiani. If I'm not mistaken, Miss Rusmarani is from the Land Protection Department of Agriculture. Agriculture uh, Ministry. So she has focus in uh, uh, mycologies in mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. department. 
and we have one another question for Mr. Hardian. So please, Mr. Fauzi, you can ask directly to Mr. Hardian. Okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Yours speaking just muted, Mr. Fauzi. Mr. Fauzi, sorry, your speaker is muted. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so far, case of food poison. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, foodborne diseases. And are a major cause of public health problems. Uh, foodborne disease uh, occurs, of course, as a result of eating food uh, contaminated by pathogenic microorganisms, right? And to overcome the problem of foodborne disease and kill pathogenic bacteria that uh, cause foodborne disease, uh, people generally use antibiotic, right? And however, antibiotic have detrimental bacteria and the killing of all microbial colonies uh, in, in the intestine, both beneficial and harmful. So can bacterial fake uh, provides an alternative a solution to problem related to the negative effect of antibiotic thank you i think um Mr. Okay. okay thank you thank you very much uh, this is uh, actually an, an excellent question ex excellent question yes. uh, that's right because uh, in this moment in this moment i all uh, only present about the bacterial phase on the uh, agricultures but of, of course this is a uh, very narrow uh, uh, scope on, in agriculture in plant production however actually of course you are right that the, the some bacteria some bacteria can be uh, uh, play role as the foodborne disease a lot of uh, foodborne disease caused by the bacteria and uh, resulting in the diarrhea and then and some some of them like uh, yes. uh, uh, breathing okay a breathing uh, uh, infections uh, and then of course uh, bacteriophage as long as they uh, they are the the bacterial target of course they can be easy can be can be used the bacteriophage to control this bacteria. In the foodborne disease, if we take from the a lot of publications, and nowadays a lot of product has been released, has been manufactured, manufacturing uh, to 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 commercialize the bacteriophage and especially to combat the foodborne disease uh, in uh, in agricultural product and then in and not only in agricultural but also in in meat. And then, and some of uh, animal pathogens, so, and and also nowadays they also uh, uh, have produced like uh, the bacteriophage to combat like uh, to apply in the uh, human health also. <clears throat> they can they, a lot of actually. I want to I I want to say that the bacteriophage, uh, a lot of product has been released and has been produced, commercialized mm -hmm. uh, to combat particular disease, including the food bone disease. But in case of agricultural product, uh, agricultural uh, sectors, there is a view number, especially in the like uh, plantations and the horticulture mm -hmm. and in the field, this is not, not so much a, a product released for this purpose. However, in food bone disease, animal disease, human disease, some of product has been released for that. Mm -hmm. So of course, this means that bacteriophage uh, can be used to combat the food bone disease. Okay. I hope you, uh, this is answered your question. Okay, thank you. 
for Mr. Adrian for the explanation. Thank you, Mr. Adrian and Mr. Fauzi. And Mr. Subrani, we have another question for you about the pathogen freelance from Mr. Ferry from our university. Yeah, please. The question is, what the microvirus also reduce the fungal pathogen virulence or only re reducing the growth of fungi? And mm. if they can uh, reduce the virulence of fungal pathogen, it's how it can be reducing. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for thanks. Many thanks for the question. Yeah. So uh, the characteristic of uh, of microvirus, yeah. Uh, to the host, yeah, they change the colony phenotype, yeah, they change the colony phenotype commonly, yeah, and number two, reduce the virulent, yeah, reduce the virulent. And how uh, microvirus can reduce the virulent, yeah, this just like the mechanism of, uh, of for example, a plant virus that in fact. Uh, plant, yeah, plant virus that infect, infect plant. So make the host disease, make the host disease, yeah. So in this case, uh, uh, fungal, yeah, fungal isolate that infected with microvirus, then it means that the fungal isolate to be disease, yeah. So because disease, then the uh, virulence decrease. And the mechanism is just similar. This is the, I mean, now uh, virus. Mm, host relationship. So at the common mechanism. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shibani. Uh, Mr. Hardian, we also have uh, another question for you. From Mr. Nuril, Nuril Aziza. I don't know where she come from. And he will ask about the do we need to give some treatment to ensure that bacterial or infect the bacteria? And do we need the genome editing through CRISPR-9, Cas9 to the wild bacteriophage before apply them as biological controls? Okay, thank you. It's interesting questions. Uh, uh, to prove that the, our virus uh, uh, or bacteriophage infect the bacterial target, we need only to, to see that the bacteriophage on the plate, they form a plaque or the zo a clear zone as I, meant, uh, as I uh, mentioned before in my presentations. So once it's proof, so it means that our bacteriophage uh, infect the bacterial cells because they show like uh, inhibition zone or inhibition area that the bacteria cannot grow well or some uh, in, in case of lytic cycle, the bacterial uh, killed or uh, death of that. And then, in case of uh, the the resistance, this is the difficult difficult uh, situations. If we combat after bacterial already resistant to bacteriophage, so we combat with the we apply the genome editing. Uh, seem like not economical uh, way because we need only cocktail uh, application because. Once the bacterial resistance, say they only recognize the resistant one. And we, if we apply in cocktail, so the mechanism of resistance become uh, uh, slow. So, and it can inhibit the process of the resistance mechanism in, in bacteria. So the bacteria, uh, the rate of mutation uh, to become resistance is not uh, equal with the 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 rate of infections because be, be, before the bacteria become resistant but bacterial already dead because of the infection of several particles of bacteriophage or the different bacteriophage uh, i hope this answer the question thank you mr hardian uh, because we have limited time we have last one question this not question i think just uh, ensure about the bacterial page from Professor Sriwayuni. She wonder if the page will success to control infected plant in the field. So how we can improve the bacterial page to use in the field, Mr. Raja? 
Oke, okay, thank you uh, Prof. Uh, Professor Wiwi Sri Wahyuni. Uh, actually, in the, in, the, in, the, in the years ago, uh, we are belong to the one the, the same uh, researcher on the back of it. But yeah, that's right. The, the problem in the application or implementation of bacteriophage to control bacterial disease in the field is the environment conditions, especially the bacterial target present on the phylosphere, on the uh, upper surface on, of the soils, because the extreme condition, especially uh, temperatures and UV light or ultraviolet uh, ultraviolet radiations this is this is uh, the big problem of the implementation or application of bacteriophage it's why in this case we need uh, to make a formulation in some some uh, report they use skim milk formulations they mix the bacteriophage uh, particles with the uh, skim milk and then Uh, they apply this one to protect the bacteria from uh, to protect uh, bacteriophage in the on uh, against the uh, extreme environment. So in my presentation, there is a, a slide of how uh, the bacteriophage protected by the skim milk uh, uh, when they applied on the on the surface area of the plants. But uh, in different mechanism, different way. Uh, apply if the tar bacteria, target bacteria present in the soil is a little bit different because sometimes uh, researchers they only make uh, mass productions and then take the uh, bacteriophage and that's directly apply into the soil. So just like soil drenching like, like that and it's uh, quite enough to, to, uh, to control the bacterial disease. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hardian. Uh, that's our Q&A session or discussion session session one. So please give a big applause for Mr. Supiani and Mr. Hardian. Thank you for your presentation. Very interesting. And without wasting the time, let's go to uh, second two, session two, I mean, we have two different speakers. However, the Mr. Yayi and Dr. Lau will be bring uh, quite same material, but Mr. Yayi will bring about the development and current status of development of uh, entomovirus in Indonesia, but Mr. Lau will be deliver about the, the utilization and challenge and opportunity to use and develop the entomovirus. So before I give the Mr. Yayi time for deliver his speech, I will read the Mr. Yayi CV. Dr. Insinyur Yayi Munarakusuma MSE was took his MSc in IBB University Indonesia and he took PhD in Clemson University USA. His expertise about entomology and he also until now as a lecturer in plant protection department in IPB University. And also, he have write many, many publications. One of them is Genetic Variability of Indonesian Orites Rhinoceros, Nudivirus, ORNV, as genus of Alpha Nudivirus, have published in Biodiversitas Journal of Biological Diversity in this year. So, Mr. Yayi, Half time, uh, I mean half hours. Time is yours. Uh, thank you, Pak Ali Wafa. Uh, can you hear my voice? Okay, I'll share my uh, screen. Can you see my screen now? Yep, clearly. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, the Honorable uh, Mr. President of the University of Edinburgh, uh, the Dean and the Vice Dean of the Faculty of Agriculture, and uh, the speakers, Pak Hardian, Pak Supiani, and Ibu Lai Weihong from University of Putra Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer of the webinar for giving me the opportunity to speak here. And this is an honor for me to have this opportunity. Uh, entomovirus is an important part of insect population uh, dynamics, both uh, for use uh, useful insect and also insect as uh, pests. However, there are still many things that we need to learn and research for the development of entomovirus in order to use it for human welfare. Uh, this webinar is attended by expert lecturers, researchers, and students, and possibly the general public who are interested in this field. However, it is worth looking a little back at the entomovirus and other things uh, so that uh, we do what we are doing now as researchers or lecturers. Uh, virus is uh, infectious, uh, infectious a potential potentially pathogenic nucleoprotein entity which reproduces from its own genetic material and it's uh, and devoid of enzymes. So they do not have enzyme system. Uh, virus is a bio, uh, biological macromolecule that have the ability to multiply within uh, within a living cell. Uh, there is also a term uh, virion. Is uh, the virion is the natural virus? It's uh, the ultimate phase of viral de development. Uh, and the term virus is generally used for all phases of development. Well, uh, a virus is composed of nucleic acid core that's surrounded by a protein capsid. And the capsid is composed uh, of protein subunit. And the term uh, nucleic capsid refers to the virion, which is uh, contain nucleic acid and protein capsid. So it, uh, they also uh, can uh, they may have an uh, envelope, and if they do not have envelope, it's called a uh, naked virus. Uh, the symmetry of the virus, uh, either helical, uh, icosahedral, or complex. The helical, uh, it's like a line or a stick, uh, a rod like. And there is also some virus like, like a, a thread, uh, benang. And the uh, icosahedral uh, symmetry is about like a, it's a, about a point. It's like a, a dot. It may have up to twenty sides and appears uh, spherical, like a ball. Uh, there are some exceptions. For example, uh, an, an oval virus uh, or a football-shaped virus. It's a uh, American football, not uh, not uh, international football, soccer. So this exception are sometimes referred as uh, having a complex symmetry. Uh, I forgot to turn on the timer, just in case. Uh, then nucleic acid of virus can be uh, RNA or DNA. They can be circular or linear. Uh, there are some that are single-stranded and others are double-stranded. Uh, some viruses contain uh, multiple segments of nucleic acid, uh, which case they uh, referred as uh, polydispersed or multipartite. For example, the SIPO virus, they are multipartite uh, uh, RNA virus. The virus can be occluded or non occluded. The occluded virus are embedded within a protein structure that we call polyhedral body or polyhedron, some researchers call it uh, PIP, polyhedral inclusion body or occlusion body. Uh, the characteristics used in uh, grouping viruses, 
including RNA or DNA, DNA uh, double or single threaded DNA or, or, or RNA, uh, either it's uh, linear or circular nucleic acid strand, a single or multiple segment of nucleic acid or multiple type uh, characterized by shape or size of the virion, uh, either uh, enveloped or naked, or occluded or non-occluded. And the following characters are useful for discriminating between viruses as various species within the same uh, genus. So we use uh, genome sequence relatedness, natural host range, cell and tissue tropism, uh, pathogenicity and cytopathology, mode of transmission, uh, physiochemical properties of variants, and antigenic properties of uh, viral. So this uh, of pro uh, viral protein. So these uh, characteristics are useful for uh, phylogenetic uh, study, for example. Uh, <clears throat> family of entomoviruses are uh, group where well, it's a, it is a simple grouping. So they are virus uh, that contain uh, double threaded DNA, for example, pox uh, viridae, iridoviridae, polydeviridae, also uh, a virus that has a single threaded DNA, the circoviridae, parpoviridae, and RNA viruses, the so double threaded RNA, reoviridae, and birnaviridae, uh, rhabdoviridae, and uh, Okay, for the SS uh, or single stress RNA, they are uh, negative strands or non coding strands, uh, the rhabdovirus and the nephiridae, and the single stress positive strand, uh, for example. And for all, uh, from all of these uh, virus families, uh, baculophilidae is the most uh, popular to study. Uh, here we have polydna virus. Polydna virus is not actually a pathogen, they are symbiont uh, in uh, parasitoid. So the uh, polydna viridae help the egg and larvae to survive within their host. Uh, Baculovirus are more common to be found in the field. That's why they, uh, they are very popular. Uh, and most studied, uh, they produce uh, polyhedral inclusion bodies or occlusion bodies, and have better resistance in the field. And baculopiridae, especially nucleopolyhedral virus or NPV, can be applied just like a chemical insecticide. And baculopiridae will continue to play an important role in the management of insect pests. Uh, can be used as model system for studies of fundamental biological processes and also as tool for a recombinant protein expression and as candidate uh, a good candidate for uh, factor for gene therapy a number of studies have been uh, 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 has uh, solved both natural baculoviruses and Genetically modified uh, bacteriophages hold uh, clear and substantial benefit for crop protection and become very important uh, where uh, insecticide, uh, where insecticide uh, chemical insecticide have become ineffective or uh, economically uh, prohibitive or have uh, lost favor for uh, with the general public. And uh, utilization of entomovirus uh, can be a uh, group, a simple group, uh, in uh, basic research and applied research also in application in the field. As a, a preliminary, preliminary study, the method and techniques of, uh, for detection of baculovirus were carried out by observing a symptom. Uh, these pictures show uh, the development of symptom of NPV. Uh, the infected larvae usually uh, become uh, sluggish, uh, move slowly, 
and as the disease develop, develop uh, the body become a little bit swollen because of the accumulation of uh, polyhedra within the insect body. And uh, just a moment before they die, before the larva die, uh, the larva climb up to the top of the plant and uh, hang by their prolegs and uh, as the disease uh, develop, the disease larva become uh, uh, what do you call uh, like a mush. So when you touch it, uh, like bubur, uh, become a mush. Observation of symptoms were also carried out on the uh, on the dissected uh, infected larva and observed under a light microscope. In this picture, you can see the fat body, which contain uh, a lot of polyhedra. So, uh, in uh, this part, it, uh, in re uh, co uh, red color, it's a fat body that contain uh, polyhedra. Uh, this uh, sample is uh, dyes uh, using uh, azan dyes the, to detect protein, which is in this case is the polyhedra. Uh, observation under electron microscope show that uh, part of the stroma in uh, the cell contains a lot of uh, polyhedra. This is the stroma usually within the uh, nucleus. Uh, and in the polyhedra thin section, you can see a rod uh, shaped MPV, and this one. I hope you can see my, the pointer. And in this picture, we can see that uh, one envelope can contain more than one period. So you see this virus is a multiple nuclear polyhedrovirus, an MPV. Detection also carried out by PCR technique, the part of DNA that, amplified, that is amplified uh, is the DNA polymerase gene. It is a consensus that this uh, polymerase gene is the region used uh, to differentiate NPV isolate or strains. The DNA polymerase uh, gene can reach up to 4,000 uh, 4, base pairs in length depending on the virus isolate being studied. This image shows the portion of the polymerase sequence that was actually amplified in the PCR reaction. Apart from PCR, the detection uh, and identification process uh, is also followed by uh, sequencing. So uh, by observing the homology between various NPV strain isolate, uh, Information was uh, obtained about the kinship relationship between a virus isolate and uh, virus isolate from various uh, geographic uh, locations. The lower image, the lower left image is uh, the polyhedra uh, uh, oh, sorry the, one second. This uh, image shows the uh, polyhedra under the electron microscopy. And uh, this is one of uh, the results of our study on uh, Spodoptera litura NPV. Research on characterization on NPV also uh, has been uh, widely carried out. Uh, biological characters uh, that are widely studied are the virulence of NPV, which is influenced by the concentration of polyhedra, the virulence of uh, NPV against various rival instar or the host range. Also, we study about the LB50, LP50, and LC50 of the uh, NPV, since uh, the NPV can be used as uh, just like a normal insecticide, as chemical insecticide. The morphological characterization uh, is also indicated out by observing the morphology of polyhedra, uh, like this one. 
and the character of the protein, the polyhedrin of uh, the virus. Uh, this is the picture of uh, electrophoresis in SDSP electrophoresis of uh, polyhedrin, the polyhedra protein of uh, NPD. You can see there are uh, several, uh, several segments of the protein within the polyhedra. Uh, more in-depth studies were undertaken in, also in the structure and analysis of gene organization. For example, research in uh, on genes 11K, 57K, or tryptophan repeats, and also fusolin. Uh, it's member of this 11 gene K, uh, even K group, has a different role in and is only present in MPV of uh, in uh, insect in order Rapidoptera. The SF68, SF59, and SF138 are members of the 11K gene group in Sporoptera frugiperda. Uh, the four amiwom, the uh, insect is just uh, found in Indonesia uh, very recently, which play important role uh, during the process of viral infection in uh, systemic uh, spread of the virus. Uh, research on and uh, and um, um, MPV DNA recombining is also widely carried out. And PV uh, DNA recombination has been carried out uh, with the primary aim of improving MPV performance as well as expanding its host range. For example, uh, Ikeda et al. perform a gene recombination of host range factor one, HRF, uh, HRF1 from Limantria dispa MNPV, uh, combined with uh, Autographa Californica. Uh, an MPP to increase or uh, to uh, the ability of replication within uh, LD60, uh, LD652Y cell culture. So naturally, the, uh, the SEMPP uh, cannot infect the cell line, but because of the combination with the Lehman Triadis para MPP, it has the ability to infect the cell line. Uh, transcriptomic analysis uh, of differentially expressed gene uh, <coughs> or genetic formigat uh, Spodoptera exigua uh, larva that inter interact with Spodoptera exigua yeah, also has been uh, carried out uh, by another researcher. And uh, in our previous study, we study the effect of inexin gene. Yes. So this is the uh, gene not from the baculovirus, but it's from the uh, Polynovirus. So the annexin gene is the gene that uh, the, the that uh, play role in uh, gap junction, the communication between two synapses. Uh, 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 of the insect that prevent the encapsulation of parasitoid eggs within the host body. Uh, this table, uh, I think we can skip this table, but this table is the, the blessed result of our left edge genome. We also study the left edge genome, uh, not only the, poly, the DNA polymerase, but uh, I believe that I think the left edge genome or left edge uh, gene is not suitable for uh, phylogenetic studies of this virus. So I prefer uh, using DNA polymerase. Is also uh, the homology percentage of uh, nucleotide from Hiposidatalaka NPV from Bogor. This is the phylogenetic uh, tree of NPV and nucleotide sequence. 
So this process using mega six. So we study the uh, phylogenics also. This is another example. We can skip, skip this one. Uh, many applied uh, research are also carried out, especially on topics such as uh, baculovirus ecology, uh, the ecology of uh, and uh, the ecology and microbial control of uh, strategies of uh, using uh, virus as insect, uh, uh, insecticide. Uh, we also study the persistence of uh, the virus within various plants. So although Bacura uh, virus uh, form polyhedra which function to protect uh, virions from uh, environmental, environmental factors such as ultraviolet uh, radiation, but the, its persistence in the field uh, needs to be improved. So it can in, uh, improve the performance in suppressing uh, pest population. Uh, several institutions or company produce uh, formulation and anti in formulation, but uh, you know the development is not uh, the market development is not uh, very uh, promising because uh, it is well. Uh, our next uh, speaker will talk about uh, the difficulties in using the. Implementing uh, NPV as uh, insecticide. So, how about Indonesia? Based on my uh, search research on the internet, uh, research on NPV is mostly ca carried out by researcher in Indonesia. It's a lot. Of, uh, I, uh, I found uh, maybe hundreds of them. However, the number are uh, far less than other studies in the fields of uh, biology, ecology, and pest control. Uh, various basic research and con uh, conducted, including entomovirus exploration, uh, pathology tests, uh, virul virulence tests, uh, study in uh, about the effect of temperature and uh, sunlight, especially uh, ultraviolet, cost range, uh, persistent tests, and in storage and in the field. So uh, in this slide, I uh, just show you the list of studies that have been conducted in GPAB. Research on biological or morphological and molecular char characterization has also become quite interesting topic for researchers and uh, stud uh, students. Uh, in this slide, uh, the far left uh, picture. So the result of uh, sucrose gradient centrifugation. Uh, in this band, we can see the band of uh, polyhedra, uh, purified polyhedra. In this picture, the next picture, uh, this is the sucrose gradient centrifugation of NPV period. So the NPV that has been uh, released from the polyhedra, and we can see there are uh, uh, more than one band here. It shows that the NPV that is being studied is a multiple NPV. So they, con uh, they have more than one period in one uh, envelope. Uh, this picture shows the polyhedra observed under the lightning microscope. And as uh, I saw this picture before, this is the polyhedra uh, observed under the electron microscope. And this is the profile of uh, polyhedrin, the protein of uh, polyhedra uh, in uh, electro uh, SDS page electrophoresis. Molecular characterization is also widely used to characterize uh, Bacolopiridae or NPV, especially. Uh, PCR and sequencing of the DNA polymerase uh, gene are among the most uh, widely used, uh, followed by uh, 
homology analysis and phylogenetic trees. In addition, research on the genetic diversity of uh, Rictus rhinovirus has also been carried out. And this virus is one of the virus that uh, has really been studied due to the difficulty of uh, editing its host. So when uh, this is the work of one, one of my PhD students that just uh, recently finished her uh, program here in the PD. So she worked uh, on Orictus rhinoceros uh, nudi virus. So this is not a uh, bacteria video, but still it uh, play an important role in uh, suppressing the uh, population of uh, farm beetle, the Orictus rhinoceros. This is made so the uh, symptom of uh, Orictus rhinoceros uh, nudi virus on the larvae of Orictus. The uh, First larvae here is the healthy larvae, and as the disease progresses, this is the progression of the symptom, and this is the picture of uh, heavily infected Orictus, uh, Orictus rhinoceros uh, larvae. And uh, the image below shows the, uh, the mid gut of uh, Oric the female Orictus rhinoceros. Uh, Adult, we can see the mid gut, uh, the healthy mid gut uh, has a very a light color, almost transparent, and this is the infected mid gut, become a brownish color. This uh, this adult uh, infected by Orictus rhinoceros uh, virus. There are also many uh, applied research on entomovirus, especially on NPT. For, uh, for example, uh, regarding the management of Viporosida talaka control in uh, tea plantation. Study on pathogenicity and virulence of N NPT also uh, a popular topic uh, among students. Uh, testing of uh, ultraviolet protective material. UV protectant, uh, and uh, we use uh, botanic UV protectant. For example, we use the extract of uh, jicama or bengkuang. Uh, we also use the extract of uh, sapindus rarak, and then the extract of uh, kudzu root. It's a type of uh, cover crop. And also, we tried uh, tea extract as uh, UV protest, uh, protectant. Uh, one of uh, the study we uh, conducted is we tried to use uh, commercial UV protectant or sunblock, and the result is also promising. So I think this is the uh, what you call. It's a, 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 a more simple approach uh, for applying the UV protectant to protect the NPT against the uh, ultraviolet uh, rays. Uh, the cocktail of NPT with uh, other entomopathogen is also one of the topics we studied. And uh, especially uh, with NPT, the combination of uh, entomophagi with NPT has been report reported and show uh, promising results. Apart from other entomopathogens, research on the application of uh, mixtures between NPT and uh, botanical insecticide has been uh, also carried out. For example, this is on the effect of neem uh, seed powder. Again, uh, Sporoptera litura. Uh, this is the result of uh, a researcher from uh, Sumatra, for example. Uh, I believe uh, I forgot to put the name. And uh, a few more in depth uh, study 
with the object of entomovirus the virus are still uh, being conducted for example uh, well in indonesia the back uh, studies of entomovirus is not very uh, very few uh, paper reported uh, one of them i found is from uh, Uh, reported by uh, Pak Supiani, uh, I believe. Uh, so the work on structure and gene organization, or uh, trans uh, transcriptomic and uh, proteomic of uh, entomovirus, still need to be improved. Exploration activities for entomovirus still need to be improved. The diversity of entomovirus uh, studied in Indian is still in the range of a very limited insect uh, species. The most studies MPP are from Spodoptera exigua, from uh, Spodoptera, uh, Spodoptera litura MPP, from uh, Helicoverpa almigera, Cyprosida talaka, or from Ostrinia uh, furnacalis MPP. So, in very limited. Uh, insect species and there is one uh, recent study on orictus rhinoceros uh, nuclear polyhedrovirus entomovirus especially mpv is known to have a wide host range infect various insects of various outbreaks uh, this is a challenge for all of us to further increase the research activities both exploratory and exploitative about the entomovirus And uh, that's the presentation that I can uh, deliver to you today. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Uh, Serly to uh, provide uh, the list of research that has been uh, studied in Indonesia and also internationally. Uh, I also would like to thank uh, Ibu Fitrianing Room Kurniawati SPNSE that helped me with the design of the presentation. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, uh, Dr. Riyadinara. And I got the point about the, we have low research in our endomovirus. So that's why we also invite Dr. Lau Wei Hong from UPM University, and she will discuss about why the entomovirus research is still low and lack depend on compare with the another virus, Indonesia and in Malaysia, of course. So before I call Dr. Lau, please commit to the CV of. Dr. Lau. And okay, let's start. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Lau Wei Hong is Lecture from University of Malaysia, University of Putra Malaysia. Oh, sorry, from uh, same department with me and Dr. Yayi from Plant Protection, and he she took her master in University of Malaysia, Malaysia, and also for her PhD. Her expertise is about insect virology and biological control and of course she have many many publication one of them is about uh, genomic sequencing and analysis of Lymantria silina multiple nucleopolyhedrovirus have published in journal of pmc genomics in 2010s And Mr. Lau, sorry, 
Mrs. Lau. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the half hour for the time is yours. Thank you, Mr. Ali. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Okay, uh, it's still um, in the morning in Malaysia. I, I mixed up the time with <laughs> Indonesia. Okay, so uh, it's 11.50 uh, a.m. Uh, Very good morning. Um, to the uh, moderator, and to the director of University of uh, Jambor, and the Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, University of Jambor, to the speakers, honorary speaker we have today, and to the participants as well, a very good morning. So I would like to thank the uh, organizer for inviting me and give me a chance to speak today at this um, webinar. I'm going to share uh, my slide. Uh, can you see the slide? Yep. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to uh, talk on the challenge on, and opportunities in developing entomopathogenic virus. Uh, when we talk about um, entomopathogenic virus, we, um, we, we know that it is the uh, Biopesticide. And biopesticide has been used in Malaysia. And if you look at the record here, um, this one published in 2011 the, uh, by the uh, oil palm, uh, Malaysian Oil Pump Board. Um, they, they used the bacillus thuringiensis uh, for the bad one control in the uh, field. We look at another publication by Malaysian Agri High Tech Syndrome Board Hut. They also use the bacillus thuringiensis for the pest control in the uh, field. United Plantation uh, reported again using the bacillus thuringiensis, but they target for the nettle caterpillar and the bedworm uh, in the uh, plantation. Then another one, the same W plantation. All these are big plantation, and uh, they have adopt uh, biological controls for integrated pest management since 1990s. So you could see um, um, many of the uh, uh, big company and the uh, uh, plantation, they, they have implemented the uh, using the biopesticide in the field. So here are some examples of the biopesticide products in Malaysia. It's just part of it. Uh, there are many of them. If you look at the uh, list here, basically um, it's made of Bt or metarhizium. See, metarhizium Bt, 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 Bt. So very easy to get the Bt product and the metarhizium in the field. And then these are the year uh, 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 dimension as well by the year uh, company. And uh, of course, there are research uh, in Malaysia uh, on the microbial biopesticides. So I personally, personally work on the uh, Sporoptera retumor and PV and GV. And now working on the uh, um, Oritis uh, uh, virus as well. So uh, beside this, there are also metarhizium uh, and BT uh, research in Malaysia. So uh, Progress in research and commercialization of bacteriovirus is still lagging behind that of PT or the metarhizium. Why? Now, because bacteriovirus has very narrow host range and it's also expensive if you want to produce in vitro for mass production. So basically many uh, publication has uh, uh, shown that it, you know, 
know, through the uh, genetic engineering, it can shorten the uh, killing time or broaden the whole range of the uh, virus. They also have some problems with the BT, even though there are many BT products in the field, uh, in the market. So uh, problems with insect resistance has been reported to, to bacillus thuringiensis. And there are also problems with the entomopathogenic fungi like the metarhizium, because uh, basically we understand that fungus, uh, they are very, uh, fungi, they are very dependent on the environmental or uh, and on the environment. So if the uh, um, condition is not suitable for the germination, so it will show very slow results at the end. So this is the uh, uh, a list of viruses, okay, available for the uh, Lepidopteran control um, all over the world. So um, I could see that there is a potential for it. All right, because the bucket for the BT and the metarhizium is available for a time being. And, uh, but of course, they do have some problem with the application in the field. So uh, that's why I always uh, tell in, uh, the growers and the students, if possible, they try to uh, focus on the uh, uh, macrovirus because they are a potential for them. To, uh, to be uh, applied in the uh, biopsies and market. Okay. Now, I, I give you a scenario in the uh, background virus uh, based biopsies development in UPM. So, there are four um, uh, phases. The first one is discovery, second one is the uh, field research, third one is the development, and the fourth one is the utilization. Now, discovery is always take a long time and it's very costly as well. It's like hunting for the treasure. So you need to spend time on uh, searching for the in, um, disease insects. Every time when I talk to the farmers, uh, if you have any disease larvae, just give me a call. But they don't bother actually because if the insect die in the field, they, they are very happy. They don't, they don't like to see insects in the field. I mean, the, the bad insects so-called. So they prefer to see them die. So they don't bother to give me a call and say, hey, look, there is a, they, uh, there are some dead larvae, come and collect it. So this is quite tough uh, um, for research. So um, what uh, we can see here that all kinds of uh, uh, disease larvae in the field, but uh, to the growers, to the farmers, they, they may not know these are the beneficial uh, uh, microbes uh, to, uh, eat, uh, to help them in the pest control. Okay, so um, what we have we done during the discovery stage, we have done the isolation, we have done the laboratory bioassay and safety trials. So um, in 1993, in Malaysia, uh, um, if, at the Amardis the research station, they have collected the uh, Sproptera retura, and they found that they show the symptoms of Becquerel infection. Well, of course, that time I haven't started with uh, my study in UPM yet. So, um, but then uh, if we look at the symptom here, Okay, so the, these are the uh, um, healthy larvae of Sporoptera retura, and these are the disease larvae collected from the field. So uh, we understand that virus, we want to study the virus, you cannot just culture it on the artificial uh, diet. So you need to use the sucrose gradient for, uh, to, to isolate them. So when we isolate them, uh, we found that under the light microscope, there are many small uh, crystallite particles. There are you know, all these shiny, shiny particles. So when we observe under the uh, electron microscope, 
and we could see different sizes of the uh, particles. Then we then further purified them and we found that actually they are a form of different uh, uh, what do you call that, the uh, bands on the uh, sucrose gradient and they are very near to each other. So we look again at the um, ele uh, transmission electron microscope and we found that actually they, uh, uh, what do you call that, appears in different structure. So one is having a structure similar to granular virus, we call it the GB, and another one similar to the uh, uh, morphology of the uh, uh, nuclear polyhedrovirus, MP. We measure the size and the, uh, the, 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 the shape and uh, we uh, uh, found that uh, they are grouped under the back of virus. Now we then further identify um, the internal structure of them. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, capsules and uh, then we treat with different chemicals and we could see there's only single virions within the uh, uh, capsule and then uh, and there's only one microcapsid within the virions. So uh, we have confirmed <clears throat> this uh, group of viruses, um, they have a similar structure to the granular virus. For the other group, <clears throat> which appeared having the uh, polyhedral uh, shape of crucian body, we treat um, the, the envelope with chemicals, and we found that there are many virions trapped and uh, enclosed within the uh, envelope. So then we then for the uh, check on the uh, internal part of the virion, we found that there are multiple uh, necrocapsids enclosed within the virion. So we have confirmed this group of viruses uh, belongs to necroporidrovirus. So once we have confirmed the identification of the viruses, it's easier for us to proceed with the uh, uh, following experiment. So we further confirm with the um, uh, recession and the nuclease analysis with the uh, different enzymes and we found that they have different uh, DNA pattern. So uh, with the phylogenetic, uh, phylogenetic tree and uh, uh, <clears throat> their group in MPB group and the, GV, uh, and the GV group. So um, of course, we did some uh, structural study and uh, it, uh, <clears throat> here you could see that the uh, virus, okay, this is a MPV virus, they uh, form within the nucleus, okay, and you could see very clearly all the nucleocapsids uh, form within this uh, virogenic stroma. And this is formation of the virus before they are um, uh, releasing into the environment. So the matured virus are here, trapped within the uh, uh, nucleus. And you can see the nucleus of the uh, insect cells already ruptured and the whole, uh, all the insect cells are full with the polyhedra. So that's why usually during the late stage of the uh, infection, you could see that insects are not moving much because most of the internal organ eh, tissue of the insects are all uh, infected with viruses and they are ruptured. So these are all the polyhedrals uh, released inside the insects after the ruptured tissue. So we did for the uh, granular virus as well. So granular virus basically they did not uh, multiply in the nucleus, but they multiply in the cytoplasm. So the formation of the uh, uh, capsule here, and you could see clearly the nucleus are still intact, no infection, but the cytoplasm of the uh, insect cells are full with viruses. All right. So these are all the infected uh, tissue. Now, what about mixed infection? Mixed infection always happen in the field. So uh, that's why when we collect the insects from the disease uh, insects from the field, first thing you must know that whether uh, you must isolate them. Otherwise, if you have mixed infection, 
this is what you can see under the uh, uh, histology. And then you could see that the nucleus is infected and the cytoplasm as well. So when we check under the uh, uh, electron microscope, you could see some of the uh, nucleus is having the uh, polyhedra. While in the uh, some other tissue of the uh, uh, infected tissue, and you could see uh, they have some uh, uh, granulovirus in the cytoplasm. So um, based on our experience, when we have a mixed infection, um, uh, the, in the mortality of the insects is, uh, will be slowed down. Now in terms of the symptoms, <clears throat> and this is the uh, healthy insects, and these are the infected uh, insect with the uh, MPV, and this is with the GV. You could see clearly, if you have the pure virus, the symptom looks very differently. And this is a mixed infection. And usually you could see this in the field. Now we did some uh, laboratory bioassays uh, at different age of the insects. Of course, the, uh, it kills um, the younger age of the insects faster with lower dosage. And then we also try with different pH and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, MPV is, uh, MPV is, uh, uh, will be degraded at the year uh, pH of 11. Okay. Now we also co uh, conducted bioassay at the year uh, different temperature. Okay, and uh, um, at the higher temperature, um, the year more mortality can be achieved. So uh, that's why when you want to conduct uh, want to apply the virus at the lowland and the highland, uh, you have to estimate the mortality rate definitely is different. And we also conducted some safety trial on the uh, pretatals. Uh, this one conducted on the cycanus. And um, basically uh, what we did, we feed the cycanus with the uh, uh, MPV infected as Corruptera litura larvae. And it did not affect the survival rate and uh, basically predicted acts like the disseminator uh, of the virus through its feces. All right, this is the uh, uh, survival rate of the uh, cycanus. And uh, we also collected the feces of the uh, cycanus and we applied it uh, back to the sporoptera litura. We found that uh, uh, viruses still work very well in controlling the insects. So we proceed with the next stage, that is the field research, where you need to do some formulation of, for the virus. You need to determine the target pass. And you need to conduct some small plot trials, field trials, storage and stability tests. Now we did a uh, different formulation a simple formulation is the uh, vegetable um, uh, powder. So uh, you just need 10 to the power of 12 uh, occlusion bodies to apply for one hectare of the uh, farm. And uh, we know that the uh, uh, viruses, uh, bacteroviruses are not pathogenic to human, uh, according to reports. And uh, that's why it's... Uh, um, uh, what do you call that? The uh, uh, it's very user friendly to the uh, farmers, but of course, to educate the farmers is important. Uh, still, the farmers are very afraid to apply virus in the field. So you could see here, we just put a small quantity of the virus mix and then spray in the field. And uh, we also try the uh, uh, MPV on the uh, other pests like the Putera cyrostera beside the spore of Terraritura in the field, and uh, you could see mortality uh, occur in the uh, uh, tested insects. So um, you, uh, sunlight and UV is the uh, major concern of the uh, biopesticide development because uh, all these microbes, they, are, they will be inactivated by the direct sunlight and the UV light. So we did uh, research 
on the uh, direct uh, UV uh, sunlight. And you could see here that if you expose more than eight hours and above, basically you can't cause any mortality to the insects anymore because the virus has become inactivated. So timing of the application is very important in the field. And actually without formulation also, you can apply virus in the field. Just a matter of the time of application. So uh, um, we also conducted the uh, research on the uh, against the UVB in activation. So basically uh, viruses, if you mix with some uh, commercial um, protectants, UV protectants, okay, it could protect the virus from in activation. So we did some small plot trials. And this is the uh, virus with the uh, UV protectant. And this is the uh, uh, chemical pesticides. And this is the control. You could see here clearly that the, a lot of damage on the control. While the uh, viral treated plots and the uh, chemical treated, uh, pesticide treated plots are having a um, similar uh, yield of the um, harvest and also the uh, appearance of the crops as well. All right, and then uh, we have this uh, uh, field trial on the uh, cabbage plot. And uh, you could see here the virus is showing a typical uh, symptom of the uh, mortality. They always hang uh, in inverted, inverted shape. And um, you could see here the body liquid uh, was being released once the uh, uh, intercumen of the uh, in, uh, insects are uh, ruptured. We did the field trial in the uh, uh, farmer plot. And this one uh, we did at the Topeco plantation and uh, managed to control the insects uh, within a week time. And uh, during the uh, 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 field trial, we could see a lot of natural enemies in the field. The same thing at the uh, um, another farm, and this is on the uh, chili farm. So for the uh, storage test, um, if you keep the uh, uh, virus in the uh, at the room temperature, if more than one year, of course, you could see the uh, drastic uh, 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 reduction in the uh, mortality. But if you keep it at the uh, minus 20, it can last long. Even we have tested after six years, it reduced 20 to 30%. But of course, for the first uh, cycle of the uh, activation of the virus, um, uh, uh, you need to do it. So, and then for the second cycle of it, uh, you, can, you can get back the uh, uh, efficacy of the virus. For the third uh, phase is the development of the product. So you need to do the economic feasibility product and you need to have a product name, you need to have a last scale production. So uh, uh, we are uh, very lucky to have the Frost and uh, Sullivan to, to conduct a strategy marketing materials for us. Then uh, we also um, come up with our product name, all right, with patents granted for the production process. And um, for the large scale production and packaging quality QC is important, but uh, because the, uh, we are still looking for the uh, partner in the production line, that's why uh, we don't have information here. Now, back to 20 years ago, if you want to promote the uh, products, especially this Bacara virus, the growers and the, uh, uh, what do you call that, the uh, producer, they are, they, they, they are scared to use it, in fact, actually, because when they heard about virus, they are afraid of whether it will infect human or not. But at that time, of course, chemical uh, pesticides was, uh, were not as expensive as now. That's why people still can afford to buy. But when the product become expensive and not effective in controlling insect pests, people start looking for 
alternative like biopesticides. So people start looking for uh, viruses from the uh, field. People start importing uh, uh, biopesticide product from uh, other country. So uh, they are potential actually. So the, uh, for the fish, uh, phase four is the utilization. You need to do a lot of promotion. So our farmers basically, uh, um, most of them, they don't uh, understand about biopesticides so much. That's why they need education because they are so familiar with chemical pesticides. So the application mode is different. And the, uh, uh, what do you call that? The, uh, some of them, they will just try to become researcher by themselves, they will just mix the chemicals and the biopesticide together. In fact, this is not helping in the pest control at all. All right, so uh, promotion is important. So uh, what are the problems of biopesticide development? It's a choice of the organism. So you must know uh, uh, which isolate of the, uh, for example, the background virus you're going to uh, develop. You cannot simply just choose the virus and apply. But of course, if you have a better choice, then you can choose. If you don't, you can just go ahead. So because there are many viruses in the field, there are some very virulent, some are not virulent, but some of them appeared uh, uh, attacking the same host like I, sh I, I showed you just now. Sporoptera, uh, Litera, MPV, and the GV, they attack the same host. So, uh, but mixture of both MPV and GV doesn't mean that they will uh, reduce the, uh, mort uh, or increase the mortality rate and reduce the killing time. They are not actually. GV basically will slow down the MPV infection according to our experience in the uh, field. That's why we, we must always have a good QC to make sure um, you are deliver uh, delivering the uh, a virulence uh, 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 virus for the pest control, control. All right, you must know the whole specificity and, uh, and the virulence, survivability, storage, environment tolerance, capability with other natural enemies. Now, according to Powell, uh, Powell and uh, Paul, 1988, there are requirements for successful commercialization of biopesticides. First thing you must know uh, whether there is a viable market size. All right, I'm sure now it's, it's easier than before because uh, people are uh, willing to accept biopesticide right now, the market is there. High performance and consistencies, more or less equal to chemical pesticides. Because farmers always ask for these questions. If the product, I mean, the biopesticide is not as good as chemical, they don't want to buy, they don't want to try. But now, um, actually, you could see more and more uh, products with a good uh, uh, virulent strain of the uh, virus are available in the market. Whether the product is persistent or not, safe to the uh, user or not, how stable is your product? And if possible, try to use the indigenous microbes rather than using the foreign isolate because the foreign isolate may not suitable uh, uh, to be applied in the uh, in, 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 in your country. So if possible, try to minimize the capital cost. And the application method is also important. So according to the uh, um, estimation done, uh, basically to develop a new chemical pesticides, you need this much of amount of money, yeah, R&D, 20 to 50 million euro. Compared to the uh, microbial uh, biopesticide, you need one to five millions. So actually it's cheaper in the development of biopesticide compared to the chemicals. So what are the challenges? So we're gonna talk about the awareness, training, education, multidisciplinary approach to R&D, the technology constraints, toxicology matter, decline in national and international research support, and SME limitation. Now talk about awareness, training and education. This is very much lacking. So we need to promote this to the farmers 
to the uh, school children. I mean, I mean to educate them the use of biopesticide for a healthy environment. So uh, we need to uh, 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 promote this to the grower as well, to the company as well, how to use it. Because lack of awareness um, it, 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 of, of this, and uh, it's very difficult to promote this to, to, to the market. And uh, farmers is the one who use the uh, product. So they need training very much. And a multidisciplinary approach. Now, basically, biopesticide development requires a team. It's a big team with expertise in all the listed fields of the activity. You need people to go out to look for the, uh, um, the specimen. You need to know how to isolate them successfully. You need to know how to identify them. You need to conduct some research on the barrel essay, the field trial. And then, of course, you need to uh, get people to teach you how to register and commercialize the product. So the technology constraint, now the delivery system is very important. So uh, usually people come up with different formulations and application systems. So we need the toxicologist people helped in this uh, field. So lacking of quality control in the production, uh, this one I, must, I, I, I need to stress on this one. Uh, farmers did uh, purchase some product from um, some other company. Well, in the end, they found that it is not working at all in the field. So when they send the product for checking and they found that actually the uh, active ingredient is not functioning at all. Either it's already inactivated or it is a, um, a, it's nothing in, in, in the uh, uh, product. So uh, it's already uh, happened. So that's why, as I said, QC is very important. You always have to check whether you are having the functional active ingredient in the product. Toxicology metals, of course, you need to conduct uh, the um, uh, field trial to check on the, uh, uh, for the registration and you need to check for the toxicology studies as well. Uh, whether it's very toxic to the environment or not. So decline in research support, yes. Um, uh, even though uh, you could see government provide some uh, 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 funding uh, to the uh, uh, research institute or to the uh, SME. So still there, there, there is some uh, decline in the uh, support in terms of money. For SME, basically, uh, if they want to establish a company, they don't have a lot of money actually. So they need support, uh, loan support. They need the R&D as well and um, for the production. And uh, they have to learn how to produce a quality product as well. So uh, basically, they need training in this field. So we need to encourage SME in the biopesticide uh, uh, development and production. So opportunities for the uh, biopesticide in the market, especially for the uh, bacterovirus, for example, they are uh, reasons eh, uh, uh, to get the opportunity. Now, according to the uh, study star website, 77% respondents believe that organic food products are healthier and more nutritious. No, 39% respondents believe that organic food products are better than the environment, for the environment. 36% respondents trust the safety standards of organic food products, and less than 4%, they just want to remain with their uh, food trends. So getting more people aware of the uh, uh, organic food. So when, and according to the uh, iPhone, Organic International, uh, to uh, press. So the global organic area continues to grow this year. Over seven, uh, 71.5 million hectares of farmland are organic, 2.8 million organic producers recorded worldwide. The global organic market continues to grow worldwide and has passed 100 billion US dollar mark. So there is a high demand for biopesticide actually. 
So as a conclusion, organic food industry is a potential industry that contributes to economic growth of many countries. Much progress has been seen for the last 20 years in promoting organic farming and organic food industry in the many countries, either by the government or NGOs. The success and sustainability of this industry demands innovative uh, marketing strategy, effective delivery system, promoting more awareness programs to the public, and collaboration between governments and the producers. So as I said, there is a potential market for endomorphogenic viruses. So I hear, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lau. Uh, Thank you, uh, Dr. Lau, about, and you give a challenge to us how to development and or develop the endomovirus for next time. So we know from your presentation, we have a big challenge. We have big problem about the how to develop the endomovirus. And before I give the participant Q and answer time, I, I interesting about you have said the indigenous virus become the one of issue to and become a problem on the endomovirus development related with the participant from Benin on last session in the morning. If the indigenous virus become one one of obstacle on the endomovirus development, that's fact mean we cannot send the Malaysian or Indonesian entomovirus to Africa or Korea, for example? No, we still can. Yeah, you okay. can. Because uh, um, entomopathogenic viruses, they are very specific to the, uh, to the host, eh? to the insect species. You can use it. Even though Malaysia and Indonesia are very, very close to each other, so the types of the uh, uh, natural enemies are quite similar actually. So you have, uh, I saw just now from the list, you also have a Sporoptera ritura MPV in Indonesia. We also have in Malaysia. So when we compare uh, the, uh, uh, there was a study done by uh, Promasek Sajab where uh, they uh, have um, uh, checked on the uh, mortality of different Sporoptera ritura MPV from different countries. And of course, even though from the same species of the virus, from different region of the world, and it showed different uh, mortality rate to the insects host. The same thing for the uh, molecular identification as well. You could see differences in uh, variations in, even though among the uh, uh, same uh, virus uh, species. So there are some differences. You can, you, you can send, your virus to other country, no problem. But how effective to be used against the local insects? This one you need to conduct uh, some tests before you really release it in large scale. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lang. And we open the discussion session, session two. And we have a half hour because we must close this webinar at 12. And we have one question for Dr. Ria Munara from Ms. Intan from University of Zimbabwe. The question is about the bi biodiversity. You know, Indonesia has become mega biodiversity and See things it also on entomovirus diversity. In your opinion, Mr. Yayi, why we Indonesian mostly focus on NPV base, not focus or have uh, a product based on entomovirus 
other like an NPC. Okay. Uh, thank you for uh, an excellent question. So since we are working on uh, entomovirus as biological uh, control agent, so uh, we are, uh, that we must focus on those virus that is uh, effective, effective then in controlling pests. Uh, in my previous research, I found uh, ASCO virus from Indonesia, but you know, as a biological control agent, this virus is not as effective as MPG. But you know, for <clears throat> the knowledge purpose, it is uh, important that we also learn about another virus, another antimovirus other than uh, NPV in Indonesia. So. But again, since uh, we are focusing on uh, biological control agents, so that's why we focus on MPV, which is the most uh, effective uh, virus uh, that's pathogenic to uh, pest. But uh, actually, in our lab, we're not only working on uh, antimovirus, we're also working on uh, bacteria, on uh, if, uh, on this nematode. I hope that uh, uh, answered the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nehru. And we have one question for you, Dr. Nob, from Mr. Fauzi, about the resistance of, is the resistance of insect entomophile? of insect to endomovirus in influenced by different host plant. And if that be how the mechanism of that, you know, is I think about uh, insects eat a plant, what is, and we apply the endomovirus, it will depend on host of plant or not. Well, basically, Resistance of insects to entomovirus, we, we seldom heard about this. But resistance of insects to Bt, to uh, that, yes, there are reports. Okay, but to virus, no. Virus, virus concept is very, very simple. They're target for, like for example, MPV, they target for the uh, nucleus. So as long as the cells is living, yeah, the host is living with the cells is living, so they will invade into the nucleus and they multiply. They just generate and multiply. All right? So the same thing for other entomopathogenic virus as well. So resistance, basically, um, we don't have this issue in Malaysia. We don't have. Mm, okay. Okay, thank you. Another question, please share the PPT. The committee. Nice. Also, one question for you, Dr. Lau. How to make farmers believe that your products, endomo, endomo pathogenic products is good and how to educate them so they so they can produce bio the bio pesticide based on the virus by themselves no if if, if, if uh, it's for the farmers when you want to talk to farmers first thing you have to be confident <laughs> you have to be confident when you want to talk to the farmers so farmers basically uh they, as I said, they need education. So usually we will conduct a talk on the, uh, about virus, and then uh, show them some evidence that how did the virus kill, because they don't understand about this concept, all right? They just know that they applied chemicals and then the insect died. Yeah. Now the same thing, they want to apply the uh, virus, the insect died, but how does it die? Both chemicals and virus also are killing the insects, but the mechanism of killing it. So we need to show it to them. So if they understand that, okay, virus kill insect like this, 
all right, and it does not harm to the environment. Right? This is important. Chemicals, we are inputting chemicals into the environment, and this is not good for the environment. So later on, you could see that pest resistant or the, uh, what do you call that, the pollution happen, all right, especially to the health of the insects. But we have to make that understand that virus, uh, and the more pathogenic virus does, uh, does not infect humans. This is very important because they still have the mindset that virus cause diseases to human, especially like now is the COVID-19. Everyone heard about virus. Oh, virus is very scary. But this virus is for insects, it's not for human. So the right message we have to send it to them. Now, to, to allow farmers to uh, what do you call that, the uh, develop, all right, or multiply, multiply the virus by themselves. This one, we need to really train them. Otherwise, what they are producing, uh, um, they may not produce a good QC of the, uh, what do you call that, the uh, virus for the pest control. Later on, they could see that, oh, the efficiency of the uh, virus is getting uh, low, They're not as good as before. So they need to learn how to handle the virus. And uh, how, because make sure of viruses is always there. When you apply the virus in the field, and in the field, there are all kinds of microbes. So you will um, collect some other uh, microbes back to the field as well. You may have accidentally bring back some new viruses from the field. And farmers, they may not know, they just multiply and multiply. They do not know how to do the isolation. They do not know how to do the purification unless they bring the things back to the lab and we try to assist them. So there's always like, you don't let the things uh, uh, just go to the farmers. You need to have like uh, a linkage with them and communicate with them if they want to use the product. Okay, thank you. Uh, about the Malaysian government, is government allow the farmer to produce the bacterial pesticide by themselves? Yeah, actually, Malaysia? actually, Malaysian government has. Uh, supported organic uh, industry since 1990 something so uh, they have set up all the pol uh, all kinds of uh, I mean policies to help the farmers in the uh, pesticide development and the uh, 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 the pesticide uh, marketing as well so they did give the uh, some uh, uh, what do you call that the uh, research grant to the university and to the SME to invest in this they do a lot but you must follow the guidelines you cannot simply get something and produce, you must know, uh, you must um, or the product the register um, as a biopesticide before we want to use it in the market. Okay, quite the same, a big difference <laughs> with Indonesian too. <laughs> okay, uh, another question for me, especially for Mr. Yeri. And about your, have said before, Dr. Lau, why we uh, we arranged the webinar about the virus is because the, you know, the name of virus become bad today. Uh, however, we know much and many, many good virus and we can use them in good way, not only virus, not only COVID-19. <laughs> okay. Last call for participant. Any question? Is it for the community? If they not 
any question again from the participant i think is the discussion session two is enough thank you dr lau thank you dr yai munara and let's say i have a write some result from the webinar today today webinar we have tried to understand and study about the three type of virus one is bacterial phage the virus where eat the bacteria where kill the plant pathogen and last is entomovirus the virus where portion the insects pest and we know like dr lau said before from today we must understand virus is useful also not bad things for human especially for agriculture and food production so we come from that i have imagined uh, the funny things let's imagine together if the virus especially of three virus we do, we have discussed today if they are human like us i'm sure that virus will work and will go to legal entities and get the law firm and go to lawyers to complaining to us and confirm i am not uh, bad things this uh, this uh, coronavirus just uh, my brothers not me and we know with this webinar again we will know the virus also useful from human human life not only causing the pandemic so we hope the pandemic covid-19 will away soon and for the last thank you for all speakers i am apologize with if i have mistaken well i while i moderate today webinars and good afternoon for indonesian and korean participant also for you dr lau and good morning for african participants thank you for your participate because we know the african time is early morning in this time and like Pak Rektor mentioned before, this is a last web international webinar series on University of Jember. So see you on 2021 20, University of Jember International Webinar Series. We will invite a professor, a researcher, and other from the worldwide university and the last for me assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and i will give this webinar back to mc thank you mr pandu you're still on you're still in Okay, uh, thank you very much for the moderator and the speakers for informative and insightful presentation and discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the agendas we presented to you and we hope you have been enjoying yourself at this event so far. We are very honored to have with us here this afternoon, Rector of University of Jember, Vice Dean of Academic of Agriculture Faculty, University of Jember, Executive Director, Project Implementation Unit, Islamic Development Bank, University of Jember, and all of the speakers, Dr. Insinyur Yayi Munara Kusuma, MSE, Insinyur Supiani, MAGR, PhD, and Mr. Hardian Susul Adi, SPM, PhD, Associate Professor Dr. Lei Wei Hong, and also all the participants. Ladies and gentlemen, 
For your information, we will send the a certificate to your email within seven working days. Now, we will close the international webinar. Let us all be guided by all things we have learned and heard from this event and be able to see influence our future, which roughly means please forgive us for our shortcomings. Thank you and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Pak Yai. Pak Setiani. Terima kasih. Ibu One of our faculty members I think graduated from University of Putra Malaysia uh, and she's working on MTP also. Do you know Nur Parika Haneda? Parika is in UPM as well? I think so, yeah. I think she, she graduated a few years ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, quite okay. a long time ago, actually. Maybe about 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, I see, I see, I see. Quite some time. Now, now I do have one a student from from Indonesia as well. She is a lecturer. Eris, mm -hmm. uh, 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 is working on the Oritis uh, uh, virus. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, you mean the uh, virus, the Oritis rhinoceros virus? Yeah, yeah. So we are, we are looking for, for the uh, virus right now. We have the virus with us. Okay. But because of the uh, COVID-19, everything just stopped. So everyone...